Psalm 78 verse 1. Psalm 78 verse 1. Give ye. Give ye. All my people. All my people. To my laws. To my laws. Incline, Incline your ears. To the words of my mouth. To the words of my mouth. Judge that 6 verse 4. Yeah, oh Jacob. Yeah, oh Jacob. A higher a power. A higher a power. Is one power. Is one power. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember. 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 Thus says a higher. Thus says a higher. Thus says the king of Judah. Thus says the king of Judah. Thus says the king of Jacob. Thus says the king of Jacob. Thus said. I am that I am. I am that I am. Remember, Remember the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day. The Sabbath day. The Sabbath day. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. So be it. So be it. Greetings from the Brother your Canaan. Unto the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. On day of the patience of the kingdom of Yashiah and also of the hope of the resurrection. My salutations with the hands all the believers saying shallow one shallow one israel and to the non-believers we say repent for the kingdom is at hand good afternoon title of the lesson wonders of our highest creation angels nature on this sabbath lesson now if you be the most high's will i come to first corinthians 16 7 acts 18 22 23 and james 14 verse 15 we do our due diligence to conclude the lesson and if not we'll move, move it over to the next festival of the holy feast of the sabbath so in this lesson we'll be looking at angels nature what is the nature of angels okay now most christians believe that angels are just spirits okay spiritual in, in the sense of not reasoning spiritual in the sense of their beauty or their makeup you understand what i'm saying how they were created their image so let's look at the true nature of angels okay according to scriptures not according to man so let's start with psalm 40 verse 7 to 10 then said I, No, mm -hmm. I come. Mm -hmm. In the volume of the book, mm -hmm. it, it is written of me. Mm -hmm. now, now the Bible says, Then said I, Lo, no. the then said I is not David. David is talking about Christ, Yashaya, okay, the king of the Jews in this precept. Then said I, Look or lo, I come in the volume of the book. So when you are dealing with Christ, you shall come in the volume of the book. Christ himself in Luke 24, verse 24 to 25, when he addressed two of his disciples that he met after his resurrection three days afterward, like we dealt with, like we dealt with last Sabbath in part two of marriage of the resurrection, Christ expound all the scripture, all what is all the scriptures beginning from what Moses and the prophets. So all the scriptures is Moses and the prophets, and also the, the, the most I don't change. That's what Malachi 3, verse 6 says. So when David says, Then said, Ah, it's not David speaks. David prophesying about Christ. David is a prophet. Luke 2, 20, Luke 2, 29, verse 30, address it. Peter addressed it on the Feast of False Fruit. David being a prophet. So David is a prophet. So David is about Christ in this precept, in this context of precept. Then said, I look, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It is written of me. So David is speaking in the second person of Christ, in the second person of Christ. Christ is the first person. David is the second person addressing Christ, the first person. Read. Verse 8. I delight to do that will. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The law is within my heart. Exactly. Because when Christ came, like I've told us in Luke, in, in Luke 24, when Christ addressed his disciples even after his resurrection, Christ expanded all the scripture beginning from the law. That's why David, David just came about Christ in verse 8. He says, I delight to do your will. So when Christ came, he delighted to do the most high's will. That's why Moses speak about Christ uh, coming in Deuteronomy 18, verse 15 to 18, that Christ will do whatsoever he, he, com he is commanded to do. Psalm 40, verse 9. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Mm -hmm. No, I have not refrained my lips. Mm -hmm. O oh Lord, thou knowest. So now in this lesson, under angels' nature, we will not refrain our lips. Okay, we will preach righteousness. Okay, we will preach righteousness in the great in the great congregation. The righteousness is of the Most High God. I hope you know that. Give me Judges 5.11. What we are doing is we are the Most High's righteous heart. Give us your book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. Mm -hmm. They that are delivered from the noise of archers, mm -hmm. in the place of drawing waters, mm -hmm. there shall they be as the righteous heart mm -hmm. of the Lord, mm -hmm. even the righteous heart towards the inhabitants of his village mm -hmm. in Israel. Of his village. So the Bible says, there shall we rehearse the righteous heart. The day is us. Okay, it says, there shall they, there is us, those that have understanding, rehearse the righteous heart of the Lord, even the righteous are towards the inhabitants of his village. Now we know that inhabitants is added there because it's landish. So it's too is is even the righteous are towards his village, his villages in Israel, villages plural, villages in Israel. That's exactly what we are doing now. Right now we are in Israel here in Nigeria. 
So what you are doing is rehearsing the most righteous art here in this village or in the, among the villages. Is that understood? All right. So let's go back to Psalm 40. In the book of Psalm chapter 40, verse 9. Mm -hmm. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Mm -hmm. Lo, mm -hmm. I have not refrained my lips. Uh -huh. Oh Lord, thou knowest. As we all can see, I myself personally have not refrained my lips. Anything that I know that the Most has feed me, I did not hide it from anybody. I come out openly and preach it openly, so that all may have understanding towards the Most High, and that we might not know the Most High's power and the Most High's righteous, righteousness or His righteous acts that He did from the beginning of creation. That's the whole point: to fear the Most High and to see and to see the greatness of the Most High's power in His creation. Read Psalm 40, verse 10. I have not hid Thy righteousness within my heart. Exactly. I have declared Thy faithfulness mm -hmm. and Thy salvation. Mm -hmm. I have not conceived thy loving kindness and the truth and thy truth from the great congregation. Isaiah 28, 10 to 12. Give us your book of Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For a precept must be upon precept, mm -hmm. precept upon precept, mm -hmm. line upon line, mm -hmm. line upon line, mm -hmm. yeah a little, mm -hmm. and there yeah, a little. So as we all can see, when, when we are dealing with the most righteous art, we deal with it based on precept upon precept. Okay, line upon line, yeah a little and there yeah, a little. This is how you deal with the most high. This is what Christ dealt with in Luke 24, verse 24 to 25. When Christ expounded in all the scriptures. When Christ expounded in all the scriptures, Christ was dealing with precept upon precept. It's the same method. God don't change. The moment you get to deal with various books from, from the law, all the way to the prophets in plural, you are dealing with precept upon precept. Line upon line. From this point, here really two, and here really two. Is that understood? Verse 11, read. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. For with stammering lips, uh -huh. and another tongue, uh -huh. will he speak to these people? To whom he said, this is the rest. Wherewith he caused the worries to rest, mm -hmm. and this is the refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yet they would not hear. But that's the issue. Israel would not hear because Israel is stiff neck people. Jubilees two verse two to three. Jubilees two verse two. For on the first day he created the heavens, mm -hmm. which are above, which are above. Now, now, now this is where most Christians understand. This is where most of us used to understand before that angels are holy spirits. So let's do it. Let's do it accordingly. Read. It. For on the first day mm -hmm. he created the heavens mm -hmm. which are above, mm -hmm. and the earth, mm -hmm. and the waters, and all the spirits mm -hmm. which serve before him. Which serve before him. So we know that on the first day, that is that is Genesis, Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, which is the beginning of everything. This is what God created. All spirits were created on the first including you and I. Read. The angels of the presence, mm -hmm. and the angels of sanctification, mm -hmm. and the angels of of the spirit of the fire mm -hmm. and the angels now these are various classes of angels and the angels of the spirit of the wind mm -hmm. and the angels of the spirit of the cloud mm -hmm. and of darkness and of snow and of hills and of all frost mm -hmm. and the angels of the voices of mm -hmm. the thunder mm -hmm. and, and of the lightning mm -hmm. and the angels mm -hmm. of the spirit of cold and of heat mm -hmm. and of winter mm -hmm. and of spring mm -hmm. and of autumn mm -hmm. and of summer mm -hmm. And of all the spirits of his creatures, mm -hmm. which are in the which are in the heavens and on the earth, mm -hmm. he created the abyss mm -hmm. and the darkness, evitide mm -hmm. and the light, mm -hmm. dawn mm -hmm. and day, mm -hmm. which he had prepared in the knowledge of his heart. Mm -hmm. Verse three. And thereupon we saw his works and praised him mm -hmm. and laid before him mm -hmm. on account of all his works, mm -hmm. for seven great works mm -hmm. did he create on the first day. Colossians one thirteen. So here's another priest that Christians usually deal with. Okay, when it comes to the creation of angels. Right now we're dealing with angels here. I watch this. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness mm -hmm. and had translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. In whom we have redemption mm -hmm. through his blood, mm -hmm. even the forgiveness of sin. Verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, mm -hmm. the firstborn of every creature? Mm -hmm. Verse 16. For by him, verse 15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God? So Christ himself is invincible. Okay? In his first nature, he's invincible. Not be so. Alright, continue reading. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. For by him were all things created mm -hmm. that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. So the Bible says, For by Christ were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth. Now we, we know that the things that exist in the heaven are the spirits, not be so. Then it says, Visible and invisible. 
Now understand therefore, when he says, for by him we are, all, we are all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. The visible and invisible are both in heaven and earth. Things visible cannot, cannot live in the heaven, no be so. That's our understanding, and also, that only the invisible things can live in the heaven, no be so. But in the earth, the, the things that live on the earth is what? Visible. But if you look very closely, the things that also exist on the earth are invisible. And the things that exist on the earth are also visible. And what you must also understand is that the things that can make themselves visible on the earth are also invisible in nature. So that means there are things that the most I created that are invisible and visible that can exist on the earth. They, they also can exist in the heaven. Now if we have more splendor than angels, are you telling me that we can exist in the heaven also too? In invisible? Because no one can tell me that angels don't exist here on the earth. That's why Paul said in Hebrews 13 verse 1 to 2, he said, be not for forgetful to entertain strangers. He says, for some have entertained angels on our ears. So angels... Hebrews 13 verse 1 to 2 are in the earth. Now we are seeing in the creation of angels in Jubilees chapter 2 verse 2 to 3 and in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. The angels of sanctification, the angels of purification, the angels of fire, the angels of cold, the angels of wind, the angels of light, the angels of darkness, the angels of hot frost, the angels of heat, the angels of cold. These angels are invisible. So when you see the cold or the smoke or the oil of the cold, that's their power or their glory. That's what the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 40 to 41 says that these angels very, very in glory. That one glory is more or less than the order, all these stars, they're very in glory. One is more or less. Understand, therefore, that these angels can appear visible and invisible. That's why Pope Paul is addressing it to us here. That Christ created everything that is visible and invisible, both in the heaven and on the earth. That's one thing we don't know before. We think that this invisible only exists in the heaven and the visible exists on the earth. Then later on, we also said that the invisible too also exists on the earth. But we have forgotten that the visible too, the visible can exist in the heaven too. They just don't exhibit themselves visible in the heaven with this nature. But they have the visible nature, but don't exhibit it in the heaven because of the realm that they are. So, but what we don't understand is that the realm where these angels conduct the war is different from this realm. But in that realm where they are, it's flesh in nature. You see, in this realm where we are, we are with this nature, with this skin. This skin to, this skin to us, we can touch ourselves. Physically, in the, in the realm of angels, they can touch themselves physically. Angels can, can touch themselves physically. So if angels can touch themselves physically in their realm, that means in, to them in that realm, their nature there is physical. Question 1 verse 16. For by him were all things created, mm -hmm. that are in heaven, mm -hmm. that are in earth, visible and invisible. Understand therefore that everything that Christ created, visible and invisible, exists in the heaven and exists on the earth. Angels, nature, is visible and invisible. That's my point I'm trying to make here. Read. Whether there be thrones mm -hmm. or dominions, whether there be thrones or dominions, uh -huh. or principalities, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So understand therefore that the thrones, the dominions, visible and invisible, they exist in the heaven and exist on the earth. That's the information that I'm trying to decode to us. Read. Verse 17. And he is before all things, mm -hmm. and by him all things consist. As that for the five twelve. That same body is, it, it can take it to go to that to over there. Yes. But the Christ is, is a more superior power. Yes. That, that's more that, that's 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 what I'm trying to explain. Because the body the body that the body that Christ res, resurrected, that is the original body man possessed from the beginning. That same body can move to any any realm. You understand? I'm saying that's why Christ don't need to knock the door to enter. He just walk in. But yet the service are able to touch him. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus was able to touch him. But you understand I'm saying? He came into this realm. Invisible. He moved through portals or gates. But yes, the disciples was able to touch him. Yes, he didn't knock the door. So that means with that same body, he can be able to walk invisible. And with that same body, he can be able to touch him. That's my point I'm trying to make with the angels. Isaiah 45 verse 12. Mm -hmm. I have made the earth mm -hmm. and create man mm -hmm. upon it. Mm -hmm. I, even my hands, I stretch out the heavens, mm -hmm. and all their hosts have I commanded. So understand therefore that the most I made the earth, created man upon it. He says, even the hands have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts, so all the hosts of heaven, the most I has commanded. Understand therefore that all angels are bound by commandment and by oath. So without, if they are not commanded to manifest themselves in the flesh, with man's nature, they are children can witness. That becomes a sin. Understand therefore that sin is an act of going against God's commandment. So the moment that man goes against God's commandment, that is sin. But angels in their creation, in the full knowledge of the scripture, have man's nature. But they do not manifest it when they come into this realm. 
Okay, the kind of nature that we, we possess now. The kind of nature we possess now is limited. It's not the original nature that we have from the beginning. The original nature we have from the beginning is, is the nature that Christ used. That Christ manifests to us in the resurrection when he resurrected. That original nature is what angels have. As a matter of fact, that nature was that we had was more superior than that of the angels. It is just that sin modify our nature and relegate us to this status of nature that we have. This is not the original percentage of nature that we possess from the beginning of time. The nature, the nature that we possess from the beginning of time, this our flesh is not limited to this realm. This our flesh can move to the heaven and exist there. It's just that sin relegate our flesh to this status. So over this over the span of years, people have get the understanding that this flesh cannot go into the heaven. It's not so. This flesh has been weakened through sin. So therefore, this flesh in this time, beginning of old, cannot go into the heaven because we have dropped from 100 percent okay to 10 percent. So this 10 10 percent power of the flesh cannot move into cannot move into dimension. It won't go. Because the energy or the power to move or the code to transport to that realm, will, this body will, will not allow it to go. I hope you are following. Something needs to be activated for you to be able to move in, in that sphere. Is that, is that understood? So read it again, Isaiah 45, 12. Book of Isaiah 45, verse 12. Mm -hmm. I have made the earth and create man upon it. I, even my hands, mm -hmm. are stretched out the heavens, mm -hmm. and all the all their hosts, and all their hosts, uh huh, have I commanded. So all their hosts have I commanded, but there be some angels that went against God's commandments, which we will address in time coming. So we will see the full nature of angels on this other lesson. Let's now go to the book of Enoch on the PDF in page 64, parable, chapter 41, verse 5. And I saw the chambers of the sun mm -hmm. and the moon. Now, now pay attention. And I saw the chambers of the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. Where they go out mm -hmm. and where they return. So the reason why I'm going to this precept, God said Isaiah 45 verse 12, and all their hosts have I commanded. I want to show that angels are bound by oath and by commandment. Once they go against their, their commandment, that is what sin is. So I'm proving to all say that angels are bound by commandment and they must obey God's commandment. Read. And I saw the chambers of the sun and the moon. And where they go out, and where they return, and their glorious return, and how one is more honored than the other is. And how one is more honored than the other is, like Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 40 to 40, 41. Read. And their glorious return, and how one is more honored than the other is. As they are making this course, and how they do not leave their course, mm -hmm. either adding nor subtract. So the angels do not leave their course, neither adding nor subtracting. Mm -hmm. And how they keep faith mm -hmm. in one another, mm -hmm. observing their oath. Observing their oath. Do you see that? Another word for oath is what? Token. Vow. Like I said earlier, angels are bound with oath or token or vow. Read. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the son goes out first mm -hmm. and completes his journey mm -hmm. at the command of the Lord of Spirits. Read it again. Verse 6. Uh -huh. And the son goes out first. And the son goes out first. Uh -huh. And completes his journey. And completes his journey according to who? At the command of the Lord of Spirit. So the sun complete the, the, lumin the luminary, the, the, the greater light complete his journey at the command, and all their hosts have I commanded as that 45 verse 12. And the sun com com complete his what? His journey. Complete his journey at the command of the Lord of Spirit. That's my point here. Let's now go to third parable, page 84 to 85, chapter 69, verse 13 to 29. Okay, let's let, let's show other angels, other classes of angels. Verse 13. And this is the task. Of mm -hmm. the chief of the oath, mm -hmm. who showed the oath mm -hmm. to the holy ones mm -hmm. where he dwell on high in glory, mm -hmm. and his name is Becca. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And this one told the holy Michael mm -hmm. that he should show him mm -hmm. the secret name mm -hmm. so that he might mention it in the oath. Mm -hmm. So that so that so mm -hmm. who showed the sons of men mm -hmm. everything that is secret. Mm -hmm. Temple before that name and oath. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And this is the power of this oath. Mm -hmm. For it is powerful. The oath is Christ there. Mm -hmm. And this is the power of this oath. Mm -hmm. For it is powerful mm -hmm. and strong. Mm -hmm. And he placed this oath. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the charge of the holy Michael. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And these are the secrets of this oath. Mm -hmm. And they are strong to this oath. Mm -hmm. And heavens mm -hmm. were suspended. Mm -hmm. Before the world was created mm -hmm. and forever. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. And through it, the earth was founded upon the waters 
uh, from the hidden recess of the mountains comes beautiful waters from the creation of the world and forever. Verse 18. And through that oath, the sea was created, and as its foundation, for the time of anger, he placed for it the sand, and it does not go beyond it, for the creation of the world and forever. Yes. Verse 19. And through that oath, the seeds were made firm. That oath is Christ. Uh -huh. And they stand and do not move from their place, from the creation of the world and forever. And through that oath, the deeps were made firm, and they stand and do not move from their place, from the creation of the world forever. Do the, do the deep not move? Eh? The deep, which is the ocean, do they not move? Why do they move? Because they are commanded to do so. That's my point here. The angels will not move unless they are commanded. That's why it tells you and is, and is bound by the sand of the sea. If you look at upward, verse 18. Yes, read it. And through that oath, uh -huh. the sea was created, uh -huh. and as its foundation, uh -huh. for the time of anger. Do you see that? For the time of anger, because the sea is an angel, because the water is an angel, but the water or the sea will not move, unless they are commanded to do so. Now, if the sea moves without the most high commandment, that's a sin to the angel of the waters. Just like Revelation 16, let us know that water is an angel. Read. And through that oath, uh -huh. the sea was created, uh -huh. and its foundation. Uh -huh. For the time of anger, uh -huh. he placed for it the sand. He placed for it the sand to hold it. But once commanded, the sand will not be able to hold the waters. It will, it will surpass the, the angel of the sand. Read. And it does not go beyond it, from the creation of the world, and forever. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. And through that oath, the deep were made firm, mm -hmm. and they stand and do not move mm -hmm. from their place. From the creation of the world and forever. And through that oath, the sun and the moon mm -hmm. complete their course mm -hmm. and do not transgress mm -hmm. their commandments. And do not transgress their commandments. So angels are bound by. That's all what this thing is saying. That's my key point I'm trying to make. Continue reading. And through that oath, the sun and the moon complete their course mm -hmm. and do not transgress their command from the creation of the world for and forever. Mm -hmm. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And through that oath, mm -hmm. the star complete their course. Mm -hmm. And he calls their names, mm -hmm. and they answer him mm -hmm. from the creation of the world and forever. So God called the stars. Now among the stars, some of them fell. We we'll deal, we'll deal, we'll deal with them. To show you some of, some, of the, some of the natures of these stars that fell. Read. Verse 22. Uh -huh. And likewise, the spirits of the water, mm -hmm. of the wind, mm -hmm. and of all the breezes uh -huh. that are part, mm -hmm. according to all the groups of the spirits. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. And there are kept the storm houses of the sound of thunder. Mm -hmm. And of the light of the lightning, mm -hmm. and there are kept the storehouse of him, and of offerings, mm -hmm. and the storehouses of the mist, mm -hmm. and the storehouses of the rain and dew. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. And all these make their Confessions. profession and give thanks in front of the Lord's of Spirit, mm -hmm. and sing praises with all their power. So, all these various classes of angels. Mist, hot frost, heat, snow, rain, sun, sun, moon, stars, and all, all the other stars of the host of heaven. These things are spirit, they are being wind. All these things render praises before the Most High God. Okay, and they are bound by oath or, or vow or token. That's my key point here. Angels' nature on this about lesson read. And their food mm -hmm. consists of all their thanksgiving. Okay. And they give thanks, mm -hmm. praise, mm -hmm. and exalt mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord of Spirits mm -hmm. forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Verse 25. But, but, but that's not only, only their food. I will show you the other things that angels can do. When you give thanks to the Most High, that is a meat. It's a diet. Read. And this oath mm -hmm. is strong over them, and through it they are kept safe, and their causes are not disturbed. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. And they have great joy, and they bless, praise, mm -hmm. and exalt, because the name of the, that son of man mm -hmm. has revealed to them. Mm -hmm. Verse 27. And he sat on the throne of his glory, mm -hmm. and the old judgment was given to the son of man. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Yashaya. That's that oath. Mm -hmm. And he will cause the sinners mm -hmm. to pass away mm -hmm. and be destroyed from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. And those who lead astray the world. Mm -hmm will be bound in chain. And those who lead astray the world, these those who lead astray among the stars of heaven, which we will look afterward. And those who lead astray, angels nature, so we will now look, if all these, if all these beings that the most I measure are just purely spirits, angels are not purely spirits in, in most cases. 
Okay, angels are both men's nature and the nature of spirits. That's what that's what we'll prove in this about lesson. That's why he says, and those who lead the world astray. So we will look among the who are these those? These those are I'll show that these those are angels too. That we all think that their, their, their full nature or their purely nature is purely spirit. Angel's nature is not purely spirit. Angel's nature is both spirit and flesh. Only when they are commanded to manifest in the flesh, they do. If they go against it, then it becomes a sin or a transgression. Their original habitation is in the heaven, which is a spiritual realm. But to them is flesh in that realm. But it's a spirit realm to us because of our sinful nature and our thoughts and our mind and our reasoning. Because man's original nature is both spirit and flesh. That's what the spirit in you know be so read. And those who lead astray the world will be bound in chains and will be shut up in the assembly place of their destruction. Mm -hmm. And all their works will pass away from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Verse 29. And from then on, there will be nothing corruptible. For that Son of Man has appeared mm -hmm. and has sat on the throne of his glory. And everything evil will pass away and go from, from in front of him. And the words of that Son of Man will be strong in front of the Lord of Spirits. Page 15 and 16, let's go. Rebels among the watchers, let's deal with it. Let's now show those angels that lead us through the world, like Enoch's 69 address. Let's now go to the book of Enoch, chapter 6. Rebels among the watchers, verse 1. And it came to pass, when the sons of men had increased, that in those days there were born to them fair and beautiful daughters, and the angels, the sons of heaven, so we can see the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said one to now if these angels don't have a human's nature or man's nature, why, why would they not look down to the earth and begin to lust after women if they don't have it in their mind that they have man's nature? But because these angels know that they have man's nature in them, that's why they behold the daughters of women, knowing that in them, in their creation, that they have the power to exhibit themselves in man's nature, and that they can relate sexually with these women. So therefore, they lost to those women in the evil loss, in the, in the evil loss, okay, and descend, make a covenant, descend and intermingle with this, intermarry with these women. So Christians will say, ah, angels are spiritual. That's how God created them. But, but that's that's the level of your knowledge. That's not how God created them. Angels, okay, had man, has man's nature in them. I will, I, will, I will devour it in this Sabbath lesson. Read. Verse 2. And the angels, the son of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said to one another, Come, let us choose for ourselves wives from the children of men. And let us begat for ourselves children. Verse 3. And Shemiyaza, who was their leader, said to them, I fear that you may not wish this deed to be done. Mm -hmm. And that I alone will pay for this great sin. Verse 4. And they all answered him and said, mm -hmm. And they and they all answered him and said, So these are multiple angels, multiple watchers. Read. And they all answered him and said, mm -hmm. Let us all swear and oath. Now these angels know that what they are about to do is a great sin. Now underline that one in verse 6 at the end of verse 6. He says, Great sin. He said, and Shemiaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear that you may not wish, wish this, this, this to be done, and that I alone will pay for this great sin. Because the angels know once they go against the command of their order, it becomes a sin to them. Because sin is a transgression of the law. Once angels go against the law of their creation, it becomes a sin. Does not mean that angels can perform that function. Man, man can perform this function. But once man go against the function that the monster asks them not to perform, what happens? It becomes a sin. And it's a punishment, not be so. There are things that man can do, but God said don't do it. Like for instance, don't eat or clean food. But can man not eat, eat or clean food? They can eat it, but God said don't eat it. Angels can have sex with women, but God said don't have sex with women. <laughs> it's not for you. Just I'm saying. Now some may say, but if God knows that angels will sin, why do you not give them men's nature also too? And then, don't allow them to marry. We also address that also too. Because what people must know is that all things that the monster has created must be tried. That's what, that's what people have forgotten. Go on. Verse 4. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath. And bind one another with cause. So not to utter this plan, but to carry out this plan effectively. Then they all swear together and all bound one another with cause to eat. Verse 6. And they were in all 200, and they came down. So these angels were about 200. He says, and they, came, and they came down on Addis, which is the summit of Mount Hammon. And they called the mountain Hammon. 
because on it they swore and bound one another with curses. And these are the names of their leaders Shem Yaza or Shem Jaza, JIY is interchangeable. Who was their leader? Urakiba, Ramiel, Koka Biel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Daniel, Ezekiel, Brakiel, As Asael, Amaros, Ananel, Zakiel, Samsiel, Satahel, Turiel, Yomiel, Ar Araziel. These are the leaders of the 200 angels and of and of all the others with them all the others with them. so there are other angels that transgress that descend at the addis on the top of mount hamon mount hamon is in israel this sub sub-saharan africa here in africa not middle east okay not not not, not, not arabia sub-saharan africa west africa central africa east africa and south africa within those region mount hamon is there with the so-called lebanon read that's it these are the leaders of the 200 angels and all of the others with them. Chapter 7 verse 1, read. And they took wives for themselves. So these angels took wives for themselves, so they eventually marry when they came here on the earth. But Christians said they don't have man's nature. That angels don't have flesh and blood. Who told you that? Angels have flesh and blood, but they don't manifest that flesh and blood nature because God did not command them to do so. And the realm where they are, they don't need to manifest in that form. Depending on the realm where they are, and depending on the people who they are meeting in that realm. So if these angels are before the throne of the Most High, they don't necessarily need to manifest in flesh and blood. But that nature is in them hidden, hiddenly. But if they wish to manifest that nature, they will speak an oath, then that flesh will manifest himself. But if they don't want to manifest in that nature, that nature will hide himself in there, it's still in them. But they've not appeared in another nature, depending on what they wish to appear in nature. Man used to have the power originally. Adam used to manifest that nature originally. But Adam sin. So the sin modified or brought down that percentage of nature. Adam used to have the force or the gravity of that nature. But sin will not let Adam manifest himself with that angelic nature. That's why Daniel made it very clear to you in Daniel 12 verse 1 to 3. That we will be like the stars of the heaven. Because man used to have the nature of stars. And still used to have the nature of flesh. Just like I, like I told last Sabbath. Adam was immortal, but still had flesh and blood, just like angels from the beginning. Read. And they took wives from themselves, and everyone chose for himself one each. And they began to go into them, and were promiscuous with them. And they taught them charms and spells, and they showed them the cutting of root and tree. That's potion or magic. And they became pregnant. Mm -hmm. And they are large giants. And these women of the earth, of the sons of men, that these angels went to have sex with, they became pregnant eventually. So how can women become pregnant if there is no sperm in the angel that goes in there? <laughs> Ask that question. Now, Christian, we said, but uh, kind of you thought before that men of all this should be thought as giants. Not be so. So now this will not be their defense. That these giants that were we are men of high stature, that be, that, that tall, men of all used to be tall, very tall as a tree. Not be so. I'm not doing that. Truly, men is men is to be very tall as a tree. But just hold on in this lesson. I will show you that these angels, these children, these giants are not giants of the sons of men. These giants are actually the, the children of angels. Even at this process, making me very clear. These giants are not men's children. These giants are angels' children. Because these angels have sex and have sperm in them. There is no way sperm can be, you, be in you if you don't have flesh and blood in you to go in, go in into women. Because that's the way our flesh has become because of sin. Our flesh has relegated to this nature that you must need flesh and blood, you know me so, and sperm to make that woman pregnant, to conceive. So this nature of women in this time, the power of women in this time, without flesh and blood and sperm, that woman cannot become pregnant. Then Christian will not, will not run to immaculate conception. There is no such thing as immaculate conception. Spirit cannot, cannot impregnate women. That spirit must have flesh and blood. So if it impregnates women, it will not be so. And mind you, not only that, these angels must not only have flesh and blood, but they must also have penis. That's my organ. Angels' nature. On this about lesson, read. And they became pregnant and bore large giants and their height was 3,000 cubits mm -hmm. verse 3 this devour all the toys of men until men were unable to sustain them verse 4 and the giant turned against them in order to devour men verse 5 and they began to sin against bed and against animal and against reptiles and against fish and they devour one another flesh and drink their blood from it verse 6 then the earth 
complain about the lawless, lawless ones. Then those who died that were buried in, that were buried in the great chasm under the bosom of Abraham begin to complain about the lawless ones. Baruch 3, verse 20, 26 to 28. The version of the book, book of Baruch 3, verse 26. There were the giants famous from the beginning. So the Bible says, there were the giants famous from the beginning. Now do you see that this, this was before the flood. That was just beginning days. That's what even, even Baruch knows that angels fell and mingled with women and gave birth to giants in plural. So even Baruch knows this history himself. That's why I said, there we are, there we are. In past days, before the flood, that was beginning during the days of Adam. Seven generations of, seven generations of Adam is Enoch. That's when this angel, this 200 set of angels that Enoch speak about came. So this 200 set of angels, who, who the overall leader was, Sam Yaza, Okay, during the days of the beginning of man from Adam's time, Baruch is not breaking it down. Even he himself knows of the history that Genesis 6 account is not speaking about men, it's not about the children of holy angels that mingle with women. Read verse 26. There were the giants famous from the beginning, mm -hmm. they were of so, so great stature, they were of so great stature and so expert in war. So, this Nephilim or Rephidim or Anunnakim were expert in wars. Read those did not the Lord choose. Neither give he the way of knowledge unto them. Verse 28. But they were destroyed because they had no wisdom and perished through their own foolishness. Deuteronomy 3, verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For only Og, mm -hmm. king of Bishan, mm -hmm. remained of the remnant of giants. Read again. Mm -hmm. For only Og, for only what? For only Og, uh -huh. King of Bisham uh -huh. remain uh -huh. of the remnants of giants. So the Bible says, for only Og, King of Bashan, remains of the remnants of giants. Of giants. What giants? Genesis 6, verse 1. Genesis 6, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, mm -hmm. when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and daughters were born unto them. Mm -hmm. That the sons of God mm -hmm. saw the daughters of men. So these sons of God, okay, that the Bible is speaking about are angels. He said that the sons of God uh -huh, saw the daughters of men. Saw the daughters of men. That they were fair. That they were beautiful. Uh -huh, and they took their wives. And they took them wives, as, as read in the book of Enoch 6, verse 1, uh -huh, under the repress of the watchers. Uh -huh, of all which they choose. Of all which they choose. Uh -huh, and the Lord said, Now some people might argue that these sons of God are not angels. Now if they are not angels, why is he making a reference here? Now we, now we know that it's a, it's a regular thing for men to get married to women, but why is he making an emphasis here that the sons of God saw that the, that the daughters of men were beautiful? Men, men are always seeing women. So why is he not making a reference saying that, that, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful? Then he says, because that, another word for fair is beautiful. Then he says, and they took, took them wives of all which they choose. Because people don't understand Genesis 6 because most people don't believe the book of Enoch. So, so they will only deal with the, the regular King James Version and stop themselves there. Job 2 verse 1. Book of Job 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. there was a day. Again, there was a day. When the sons of God. When the what? When the sons of God. What the men, what the what? When the sons of God uh -huh. came to present When themselves. the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Uh -huh. And Satan came also among and them. Satan also, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From where comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro before the earth. Now these sons of God are they men or angels? angels. They are angels. So these are not men. These same sons of God there are the same sons of God in Genesis 6 verse, verse 1 to 4 as we are going forward to get the understanding here. These are not regular sons of angels are also called sons of God. Because the sons of God, they came to present themselves before the Lord. Now, I will show you that. They came to present themselves, they came to praise the Most High God. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Then Satan now joined his holy angels who came to present it. We are going there. I, I will show you that. We are going there downward. That will read it. I will show you that. The angels, at certain hour, go and praise the Most High God. At certain hours of the day, angels will go and praise before the Most High God. So that's the presenting before the Most High God. Job 38, verse 7. Can you mention book of Job? Chapter 38, verse 7. Mm -hmm. When the morning stars sang together. When the morning stars sang together. You see that? When the morning stars sang together. Morning stars sang together. Morning light sang together. Angels of light, the stars of heaven. Because there were certain stars of heaven that rebelled, that fell during the days of Enoch, like Shemiazah, Azazel, Kukabiel, Ebarakiel. 
Romy, uh, all these angels, they were morning stars. They fell. They left their habitation, descend because they knew that they had man's nature. These angels or stars of heaven or lights of heaven knew that they had man's nature. But they don't, they, don't, they don't manifest it in the heaven during their course of travel to serve man, to give light on the earth. But they knew that they had that power in them to manifest it when they are commanded so. So these angels now went against their commandment because they lost. They saw how fair or beautiful the daughters of men were. So therefore, in Genesis 6, these angels saw the women were, were fair. Now descended at Addis on the summit of Mount Hammon, which is Lebanon in sub Zara or sub Sarah, Africa. And went in and out married these women. Pregnant them and bought giants like if like Enoch 6 and Genesis 6 are dressing. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Can you hear where angels are singing? Huh? Can you hear where angels are singing? Because these morning stars are angels and these sons of God, okay, are angels. They shouted for joy because this morning star this Sons of God are shouted at the morning stars. These sons of God are shouted for joy are synonymous to the morning stars in this same verse. Genesis 6, let's go back again. Verse 3. Genesis 6, verse 3. Right. And the Lord said, mm -hmm. My spirit shall not always strive with men, mm -hmm. for that he also is flesh, mm -hmm. yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. There were giants. The hundred and twenty years is the judgment that the Most High gave man to repent. Okay, he has not, he, this precept has not to do with the, with the days of man. This context of precept of the 120 years is not about the reduction of the years of man. No. Give me the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verse 8. For Paul says the Lord, mm -hmm. Behold, Behold, mm -hmm. I give you a period uh -huh. of 120 years. So it is Genesis. Those that translated, those that translated is that, that misinterpret the original script. Before the flood, where God pronounced the judgment, it's not the, it's not the reduction of the years of man. It was actually the, the days that the Most High gave man to change from their ways. That is the original translation of the text. In that context of Genesis 6. Now there are precepts where God reduced the years of man. But Genesis 6 is not the precepts where God reduced the years of man. Because in Genesis 6 was before the flood. That, that precept original translation was the amount of years God gave man to repent. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I give you a period of 120 years. If you return to me and forsake your evil ways, then will I also turn away from the evil which I told you and it shall not exist, says the Lord. Genesis 6, let's go back there. Genesis 6 verse 4. There were giants in the earth. There were giants in the earth in those days. In those days, we really during this time. And before that means before the flood of Noah's time. And before the flood during Noah's time. Okay, and before Noah's time. Because these giants were born before Noah. That's why I said there were giants in the earth in those days. Before Noah was born, and also during Noah's time. Read. And also after that. Then it says, and also after that, meaning after the flood, these giants exist. That's why in Deuteronomy 3 verse 11, he says an Og, king of Bashan, only remained of the remnant of the giants, of, of the remnant of the giants. Because Genesis 6 is telling you that in those days and also after that, so after, be, after the flood, these giants also still exist. There were giants in the earth in those days before the flood. And also after that, meaning after the flood. That's why Deuteronomy 3 verse 11 says, and, and only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Because these giants are not giants of men. These giants are children of the fallen angels. Because angels have man's nature when they wish to manifest it. Now when they wish to manifest it, if it's against God's commandment, it's a sin. These angels choose to sin because Shemiaza said that I know that this is a great sin. And that we will pay for this great enterprise. So therefore, we must bind ourselves with an oath. Because angels know that sin is a trans transgression of the law. And when, they, when there is a law, there are commandments. So these angels went against their commandments. That's what the book of Enoch, chapter 68, okay, is addressing. Okay, on that, the, the top parable. And all those who lead astray the sons of men will be punished. Because these were the watchers that led astray the sons of men. Because they had man's nature, they had pennies like men, they had flesh and blood, if they are commanded to do so, but these angels were not commanded to do so, so therefore they manifested themselves. Now we'll show you in other precepts that if the angels, when they are commanded to manifest themselves in the flesh, they would, and, and they will do things of man's, in man's nature, and possess all man's feature. Nothing is new under the soul. Man has more splendor than the angels. Man has everything angels have, except the wind. 
So there were, there were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, so this giant on the Felim exists after that. That's my key point here. Draw me three verse level. Let's go back there. Here we shall look at Draw me chapter three verse level. For only Og, king of Bashan, remain of the remnants of giants. Behold, his bested was a bested of iron, and it is not in Rabat of the children of Ammon. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it. The Bible says nine cubits was the bested of, of Og, king of Bashan. Now a cubit is 1.5. So when you multiply 1.5 by nine cubits, which is the length, 1.5 times nine will be about around 13.5 by feet. So this Og, king of Bashan, the height of his bed was about 14 by equivalent because decimal point five is equivalent to 14. So 14 feet was the height of the bed of Og, king of Bashan. So that means Og would have been around 12 feet. Or, or 13 feet tall in height. 13 feet is very long. Because a basketballer is 7 feet. A, a basketballer can be 7 feet or 6.8 or 6.9. Don't be so. So it's almost 2 times. 7 plus 7 is not 14. So Og is almost double the size of a basketballer. Is he a giant? This is how tall Og was. Numbers 13, 28. Let's go. These were not children of men. These were the remnants of Genesis 6 that the Bible is talking about. This is Deuteronomy 3 verse 1 are the remnants of the giant that came out of Genesis 6 verse 4. That's what Genesis 6 verse 4 says that in those days, okay, and after that, because this giant exists in the earth in those days during Noah's time, and after that, that's why all oh, king of Bashan in Deuteronomy 3 verse 11 came of those remnants of the giant that made it after the flood. God did not destroy the Nephilim or the Rephidim, like the Hebrew call it, totally. They were remnants, like I've told us several times. Whenever there's a desolation, there's always a remnant. And as some may say that why did God leave this, leave this giant to exit? Because God will try always try the sons of men for judgment. Numbers 13 28. Book of Numbers 13 verse 28. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, uh -huh. the people will be strong that dwell in the land. Nevertheless, the people will be strong that dwell in the land. Twelve men of the tribe of Israel were sent out by Moses to spy out the land of Israel. Now, mind you, in this place, the train of Israel were at Mount Paran. Mount Paran is in where? Bono State. Don't be so. Mount Paran, when you, when you look at ancient map, is in Bono State. So the train of Israel were in Nigeria here, yeah, at this point of time. In case you don't know, when you look at ancient cartography map, Mount Paran is located in Bono State, today Bono State, here in Nigeria. This is where the train of Israel were in this precept here. So from this precept here, the train of Israel were told to go and spy out the land of Kenya in South Africa. Okay, let, let me show you that this, this is Mount Paran. 3 verse 1. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. Send thou men. That they may search the land of Canaan, uh -huh. which I give unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. of every tribe of their fathers, mm -hmm. shall ye send a man, mm -hmm. every one a ruler among them. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And Moses, by the command, commandment of the Lord, and Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, uh -huh. send them, send them uh -huh, of every tribe of nation of Israel, there are 12 tribes of Israel. Is that understood? Yeah. Read. Send them from the wilderness of Paran. Send them from the wilderness of Paran. Now, wilderness, so now for wilderness is what? Desert. Wilderness is desert. But no state is not covered by desert. I wish I can show us that map, but it will take us time here. But I will show us a later word. Now, some may say that if God asks Israel to go and spy the land of Canaan, Mount Paran does not belong to the children of Israel. Who told you that? Give me the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1. Joshua 1, verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. That the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them. Jordan, do, 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 does it belong to Israel? Yes. Yes. Jordan belongs to Israel, but God said, go over Jordan to the land. He look as if God is sending them out of Jordan. As if Jordan does not belong to Israel. Jordan belongs to Israel. So just because the children of Israel were in Paran, and God said, go and spy the land of Canaan. Okay, God is telling the children of Israel, go and spy the other region. Because people were living there. So go to the other region where people are living and destroy them. Because everywhere the children of Israel when they fight wars. Now all the wars of the children of Israel against the Nephilim were not recorded. Some of them were recorded. Some of them were not recorded. So just because God says, go, out, go, go, go from Jordan to the Jordan, I promise you, is Jordan not, not, not the promised land? It's also the promised land. Mount Paran is also the promised land. Now, every land where the source of the throne of Israel tread that does not belong to them, God will tell them. Every place where the throne of Israel pass that, that God will say it's not for you, God makes it very clear to them in the scripture. So, every, every other place that the source of the throne of Israel food tread upon belongs to them. 
Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Three. Every place. Every place that is so of your foot. Every single place that is so of your foot, your feet, your so of your foot under your feet. Shall tread upon. Shall walk upon. That have I given unto you. Uh -huh. As I said unto Moses. As I said unto Moses. So every single place where the children of Israel shall pass. I have given unto you the children of Israel. As I said unto Moses. Verse 4. From the wilderness. From the from the from the wilderness. Uh -huh. And this Lebanon. And this Lebanon from the wilderness. So every region where there is a wilderness. Where the children of Israel pass. Like Le like Mount Paran. In, in Numbers 13 verse 1 to 3. Now because Mount Paran is a, is a desert. In case you don't know. First Samuel 25 verse 1. Read this for me. I want to show you that Paran belongs to the children of Israel. Here in Nigeria. Mount Paran is in Nigeria in Bono State. Read. First Samuel 25 verse 1. Mm -hmm. But like I said I will show us the map later world. I can't show us the map my with I have to look for it. Because I have so many maps in my phone. Read. And Samuel died. Mm -hmm. And all the Israelites mm -hmm. were gathered together mm -hmm. and lamented, lamented him. And Samuel died, and all the all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose uh -huh. and went down to the wilderness. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of what? Paran. So David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Read. Verse 2. And there was a man. Now let, let me show you that Paran belonged to the children of Israel. Read. And there was a man. And there was a man. In Mount. whose possession were in Camel. Now remember, David went, went down to the wilderness of Paran. So in Paran is this region of Mahon. Mahon, okay, is in the region of Paran. Now because it's a, it's a wilderness, does not mean that there's no land there. And there's no pasture there. There is grass there. Just like in Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is a desert, but there is grass there. That's why Mo Moses went to feed his, his goats or the sheep there. Where the most are revealed to him, the burning bush. That's why it's a burning bush. Mount Sinai is a desert, but in, in that desert there is grass is there. People live there. Read. That's true. Uh -huh. And there was a man in Mahon. Uh -huh. Whose possession. So understand therefore that Mahon is in is in is in, is in Paran. That's where David went. Read. And there was a man in Mahon whose possession were in Camel. And, and that man was very great. Mm -hmm. He had three hundred, he had three thousand sheep and three thousand eight thousand goats. And he was sharing in sheep in Camel. Now the name of the man was Naba. Now the name of the man was Naba. Uh huh. And the name of his wife Abigail. And the name of his wife was Abigail. And we know for our that David married this woman called Abigail. This Naba was a wicked man. Read. And she was a woman of good understanding. And this woman was a woman of good understanding towards the Most High's law. And of a beautiful countenance. So this woman was very very beautiful. Read. But the man was. But this man was callish and evil in his in his doing. So this was an evil person in his doing. Read. And he was of the house. And this man was of the house of Caleb. So this man was of the tribe of Judah because Caleb is of the tribe of Judah. And David went to this region in Paran in, in Mahon. <laughs> because the reason why David went in Paran because Paran belongs to the children of Judah. Because Caleb is of the tribe of Judah, not be so. And Paran is, is in where Bono State. Paran is in Bono State, and this man is of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> That's why I tell you that the kingdom of Judah is here in Nigeria. <laughs> okay, I, I, as I thought last about, where, 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 the, where uh, Jacob said, Akobi, said, the, Akobi the Bantu man says, that his captor shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, meaning from the land. There will always be from the land, from generation to generation, that will always produce children, that will always teach the law, and bring their other brothers back to remembrance in the land, the remnant in the land, not those are brought to fulfill the dominion to 1064. There will still be a remnant in the in the true land of Israel that the most that we are awake in the last days that will that will do what return back to the law in Jubilee 23, verse 26. And those who will do what their deaths will begin to increase, they will, be, they will begin to age very slow because they will understand the law of the most high concerning diet. Because God will use that to show great signs to the whole earth. The whole earth will marvel at their appearance and their wisdom. As you are seeing this day, because they are still in the land, as you are seeing here in Nigeria, because Nigeria is in the west coast of Africa, okay, at the Gulf of Guinea, in sub Sahara or sub Sahara Africa, which is the true land of Israel. If you go back to Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, it tells you from, from, the, from the wilderness, from this wilderness, then it says, and the great river, the river Euphrates. Euphrates is in between Nigeria and Ghana, as I broke down before. 
Ufre, the, the original Ufret is, is is the Ninja River or the Black River. That is the, that's the original great, that's, that is the original the great the river Ufret is. Okay, but, but these Gentile nations are trying to hide the truth from, from people. Because through colonialism, they change the name of things. They change places, change names. These Gentiles, they rename every single thing. Read. 1 Samuel 25 verse 3. Yes. Now the name of the man was Naba, mm -hmm. and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding, and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was childish and evil in his doing. And he was of the house of Kele. And this man was of the house of Kele. That's my key point here. Is that understood? Yes. All right. Numbers 13 verse 28. So therefore, Mount Paran is a wilderness in Pono State. He belongs to the tribe of Israel, to the tribe of Judah. We are still in our land. What we are doing is fulfilling prophecy or bringing back the law to our brothers. If they will hear or they will forbear, that's up to them. That's what, that's what God told Ezekiel in, in Ezekiel 3. Whether they will hear or forbear, that's up to them. But nevertheless, the bring it out to them. Blow the trumpet. Because that, that, that spirit of the watchman. A watchman is not here to make friends. A watchman is just there to cry aloud. Blow the trumpet. Those that will hear will hear. Those that will not hear will not hear. It's not after you. It's not after your. It's not, it's not a busy body. It's not, it's not there for eye service. I'm not here for eye service. Okay, I'm here to, to blow the trumpet. Do the most nice way. If you want to hear, that's up to you. If you don't want to hear, that's, not up, to, that's up to you. Read. Number 13, verse 28. Number 13, 28. Let's read. Nevertheless, uh -huh. the people be strong. Nevertheless, the people be strong. Uh -huh. That dwell in the land. That dwell in the land, yes. And the city were was. And very great. And uh, moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And uh, moreover, we saw the children of the children of Anak there. Now these children of Anak, who are they? Verse 33. And there we saw the giants. And there we saw the, the children of Anna there. Verse 3 says, And there we saw the giants. Because the Anna are the giants. And there we saw the giants. Uh -huh. The sons of Anna. The sons of Anna, like verse 28 says at the end. Read. Which come of the giants? Which come of the giants? Like Dromi 3 verse 11 says that only Og was the remnant of the giants. Now when he says only Og was the remnant of the giants, only Og was the remnant of his own kind. Because the giants came in various species, in various types. So only so Og in his own type of giant, okay. He, he, he himself was the only remnant of his own tribe of the giant because the giant had came with so many tribes because they have so different looks. Is that understood? Link your precept up. Precept must be upon precepts. So verse 33 says, and there we saw the giant, the sons, the sons of Anak. I'm not making this up. This is biblically proven. And there we saw the giant, the sons of Anak, which come of the giant. Now, how does the giants come, come about? Because these giants were the children of the angels. Now, if angels' nature was purely spirits, how come these giants are in flesh? Because you must remember, for a woman to conceive and bear children, there must be requirements. Without comment is what? Flesh and blood, penis and sperm. So if this thing is not imputed in a woman, that power or decree to bring forth children cannot manifest himself, don't be so. Because these giants did not come in spirit, these giants were manifesting in the flesh. And the children of Israel went, went at war with them, don't be so. Because these giants were children of holy angels that Genesis 6 was addressing, that in those days, that there were giants in the earth, and after that, because after that, meaning after the flood, they exist, and only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the giants. You understand what I'm saying? Then verse 3 in Numbers 13 says, and, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. Oh, we are getting the link. Yes. Very clear. All right. Very good. Read. Numbers 13 verse 3. Yes. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, mm -hmm. which, come, which come of the giants. Mm -hmm. And we were in our own sight. And we were in, the, in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we look like grasshoppers as you are seeing grasshopper. That's how this, this Nephilim or giant look at us back then. When... When the children of Israel, those 12 men that went to represent the spirit land of Canaan, when they went there, they saw the Anakims or the Anunnaki. These were the Nephilim, children of holy angels. Because the Anakim were the children of Abba. I'm not kidding this up. All this is scripture I'm talking about. So we were in their side as grass or we look so small. Because these were not regular men. They were all the source of the giant. Because these giants are not men. These giants are not, are not regular men. Though they have flesh and blood. But their origin, their, their pred predecessor, or their pedigree, okay, or their stock, or their parentage, or their ancestry, or their bloodline comes from angels. Because angels have man's nature also too. But people's mind in this generation are limited. That angels are only spirit in nature. No. Angels are not, not only spirit in nature. The Bible gives you the information. But your theologians don't know how to break it down to you. That angels also have man's nature. If they are commanded to do so. But once they are, they are not com commanded to do so, it becomes a sin. 
I'm not making this up. Even the prophets and the apostles address these things. But your theologians, your pastors, these fake theologians don't know how to combine the precepts and teach. So therefore, they teach you what they know. Because the Bible tells you that we know in part. First, first Corinthians 13, 9 said we know in part. And we understand in part. Because this gift is given to us by measure. Like 2 Corinthians 10, verse 13 to 14 says. Not be so. I'm not making this up. Everyone has to give a measure. So I may have more than that man. This man may have more than me. What I know he doesn't know. What he knows, I may not know. Not be so. So therefore, let's not envy. Instead of envying what that person doesn't know and that person know, learn from that person that know. That's wisdom. That's why Paul breaks it down in 1 Corinthians 12. So that the, the hand cannot say I have no need of the eyes. If not, we are the sin. Not be so. Because Paul is not speaking about the physical hand. Paul is speaking about men. But Paul is using, using the, the physical body of man to address people. That we don't know everything. We need each, each other's help or compliment to bring the truth. Is that understood? Read. Numbers 13 verse 32. Mm -hmm. And they brought up an evil report. So those that went to spy the land brought up an evil report from Maparan all the way to South Africa. Because this region of where they went to search in South Africa. So from Nigeria, which is Maparan, which also belonged to the kingdom of Judah. So they went all the way. Now mind you, Judah and Ephraim share brother. I've said time with that number. Alright, let's go on. Numbers 13, verse 13. And they brought up an evil report uh -huh. of the land yes. which they have searched unto the children of Israel, yes. saying, mm -hmm. The land to which we have gone to search it mm -hmm. is a land that eateth up the inhabitants. It's a land that eats up the inhabitants because these people were cannibals. They were cannibals, they were, eat, they were eating and devouring men. And not, not, not only that, they, they, were, they were teaching men how to eat themselves. So men, men, men became men eaters. That, that's why you have men eating flesh and drinking blood. Because angels taught them to do so. And their children. It is a land that eateth up its inhabitants uh -huh. thereof. Mm -hmm. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great status. And all the people that we saw therein are men of grace. All the people. So the giants were many. There were many. That's what they were a tribe. That's why I said, and all the people we saw therein were men of great stature. Numbers 13 32 in the King James Version. I'm not making this up. 2 Samuel 21, 16. More evidence of, of the train of the fallen angels. And each be binob, uh -huh. which was the son of the giant, the weight of whose pair weighed three hundred. And each be binob, which was of the sons of the giant, in 2 Samuel 21, verse 16. I'm not making this up. Even David himself, okay, way after Moses, okay, he himself encountered, encountered the giant in Judah. Not be so. I'm not making this up. Which was of the sons of the giants? Which was of, of, of means the origin or the bloodline. Which was of the sons of the giants? Uh -huh. The weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight. He being greeted with a new sword, thought to have slain David. Uh -huh. But Abishai, Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, so called him. Mm -hmm. And smote the Philistine. Yes. And killed him. And killed this each be up. Uh huh. Then the man of David. And you see how Israel war with the Nephilim. This was our war with the giants. Then the man of David mm -hmm. swore unto him, mm -hmm. saying, Thou shalt not go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not Quench. the light of Israel. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Then, and, and it came to pass, after this, that there was again a battle with, with the Philistines at Gob. Then Shebekai, the, the Ushatites, slew Saf. Which was of the sons of the giants. So you can see more, more evidence, more record, more receipts of the giant that they exist. These giants were the children of holy angels. Verse 19. And there was again a battle. There was a battle. There was a war in Gob with the Philistines. We are a, a, a Han, the son of the son of Jare, Jare Oregim. Okay, a Bethlehemite slew the brother of Goliath, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittites. The staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. So Goliath himself and his brother were of the giant meaning that they were they were children of fallen angels that exist after the flood like genesis, genesis chapter 6 verse 4 so therefore the account of genesis 6 is not speaking about the men those giants were nephilim they were the mingling of of the angels that are lost dead those sons of god are not men those sons of god are so that daughters of women were fair they are not men they were what the angels angels are accounted as sons of god like the book of job chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 says and like the book of job chapter 38 verse 7 says there he says and when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of god shout for joy not be so and the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Can a man present himself in front of the Most High God? No. no. Only angels can present themselves in the realm of the heaven in front of the Most High God. Don't be so. Yes. I'm, I'm not making it up. 
Let's read it. Verse 20. And there was yet a battle. And there was yet a battle in Gath. There was a man of great stature. So another man of high stature. No be so. Like, like Romans 13 verse 20, 29 says. Romans 13 verse 32 says. And 33. That these were people of great stature. When those two went to spare the land. They saw them of great stature. Is that what it says there? Exactly. Follow your precepts. I hope you are following here. So he said, and there was a, yet a, a battle in Gath. There was a man of great stature that out of every hand six finger. This giant has six finger. Now is it normal or regular for man to have six finger? No, because these are not regular men. Because these angels transgress the order of their, of their creation as we are seeing this day. Because angels are not beginning to teach men for everyone from the most high path. Angels from the beginning taught man to transgress. Who was that angel? Lucifer the fallen one. Because Lucifer taught man okay, to transgress the most high commandment. That same, that same, that same re re replication of knowledge is still being passed on to this day. That's why you have Christians still transgressing God's commandment and think that there will be no judgment. In their error, doing Sunday, doing Christmas, doing birthday, doing Easter, doing Eden Kapi, Eden Fitri, Eden Madrid, doing Valentine, Lord, Valentine, in the error of their, of, of their mind. Is that understood? Yes. All right. Verse 20. And there was yet a battle in God. There was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers. So this giant has six fingers. And on every every foot, six toes. So he has six toes in his foot. Six fingers, six toes. That's not normal. Four and twenty in numbers. So he has twenty-four hand and feet. Man's supposed to have twenty, don't be so. Ten, ten finger, ten toe. But this one have this one have six, six, six. This one has eleven, eleven. I mean, not be so. Twenty-one. And there was yet a battle in God. There was a man of great stature that had on that had on every hand six fingers. And on every every foot six toes, four and twenty in number. And he was he also was born to the giant. He also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimea, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Second Peter two verse four. Let's prove more. Let's now prove that these angels went against the oath of their commandment. Understand therefore that all creation, God made an oath or a covenant or a vow with all of his creation. So all those that go against that vow, there comes a judgment or a punishment for it. Now for the angels, this comes their punishment. These angels were not, were not showed mercy. This, this thing they were told before they sinned. Now mind you, the Bible will not tell you everything. But through the account of the event that was recorded, we can understand that angels, when they were given commandments, okay, with the oath they had, with the, with the oath of their agreement, they had with the Most High God. The warning that God gave to them is that, look, if you sin against me, I will not show you mercy as I show to man. If you sin against me, I will bound you. So angels know this. That's why Shem Yaza said that I know that this is a great sin and that I will, will not suffer it of it alone. But, but evil laws will not let you to resist that temptation. Because all things that God made must be tried. That's why God created them with man's nature. To try them if they will be obedient okay, to the rule of, of, the, of the regulation in the heavens. So God tried angels with man's nature to have man's organ, to have man's, man's structure, man's features, but, all, but only, only to manifest them when necessary. Is that understood? This is a strong myth lesson for those that can chew it. This is this not for babes. Is that understood? Alright, 2 Peter 2 verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sin it, that sin it. All the what the Bible says. For if God spared not the angels that sin it. Very slow. For if God spared not. For if God, for if the most high God, not if me. For if God, so Peter is teaching the churches, not me. Peter is teaching the churches that the angels truly really have men's nature to give out to children. Peter is going back. To, Peter is going back to Genesis six. Now watch this. Read. For if God spared not the angels in plural, not singular, plural angels, because these angels are two hundred, recorded in the book of Enoch. I'm not making this. So this is your. This is your regular King James version. Read. But your theologians or your pastors don't know how to explain it. That is the problem. They, they, are, they are the sickness to, to, to the people. Read. For if God spared not the angels. For if God spared not the angels that did what? That sinned. That did what? That sinned. That did what sinned. That sinned. That did what? All the men. That sinned. That did what? That sinned. That did what? That sinned. That did what? That sinned. What is sin? Transgression of the law. Sin is a transgression of the law. Let's, let's go there. 4 John 3 verse 4. The same, the same New Testament. Oh. 4 John 3 verse 4. Let's see what sin is that this angel did that God punished them. Very simple to understand. You know, you know, all these, all these pastors, they don't, know, they don't know what they are doing. They are confused. I keep saying that. Yes, Joshua, book of First John, chapter three, verse four. Read. Whosoever committed sin, whosoever committed sin, uh -huh. transgress also the law. So the Bible says, not me, that whosoever committed sin transgress the law. So whenever anyone, whosoever that person be that sin transgress the law, that's exactly what the book of Enoch chapter sixty-eight says. That all those, all those angels who lead men astray shall be punished. 
Because these angels went against the law of their oath or their covenant or their token. Read. Who should have committed sin mm -hmm. transgress also the law? Because angels are bound by law. That's why Isaiah 45 verse 12 says, And all their hosts have I commanded. All their hosts have I commanded. Because angels are giving commandments. And commandment is contained in the law. Angels have law. Law holds the volume of commandments. Law is like a title of a book. Commandment are the content of that law. Not be so. So these angels went against the law, against the commandment of their law. Is that very clear? We are reading. For sin is a transgression of the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. Second Peter 2, let's go back there. Book of Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. For if God spare not the angels, so the Bible says that if God spare not the angels, not me, oh, the Most High God, your Maker, your Creator, not me. Everyone is a witness can see it. For if God spare not the angels, now most people don't know what God. Now the, the, the problem is this: when people read this precept, people don't know what he's saying about. People say, "What did the angels did that God did not spare them?" Now you must know that angels are giving commandments. Now what God told the angels, the Bible did not record it down. But when you vet the when you vet the scripture or when you inspect the scripture, when God made a covenant with the angels. God told them that, look, that I will not show you mercy like I will show to a man. So therefore, if you sin, I will not spare you. Now, the sin of these angels is now recorded pre-flood. During last time, as we are broke down, going to this time, because their children exist after the flood. That's why all over in the Old Testament, it tells you this giant that exists of the remnant of the giant, of the remnant of the giant, or was born to the giant. Not be so. Because it, because it, because in Genesis chapter six verse four, it tells you and there were giants in the earth in those days and after watch, after what means after the flood, because these were the children of the sons of God or the angels, because angels are also called sons of God. I'm not saying they are not called sons of God. I'm saying that in that context of precept in Genesis six, those sons of God they are not men. They are angels. That's why in your NT, in your New Testament, the apostles giving you a remembrance. Peter is reacting to the righteous act of the Most High, like John Genesis five eleven says in the land to the churches. Now look, the, the reason why sin is multiplied because angels who are bound did this thing to you. So Peter now is not calling the remembrance of the event that took place, how sin became. The angels don't change the same method. All these holy angels from Lucifer that trick Adam. Going to, going to these 200 angels that came, seven generations from Adam, new time of Enoch and Noah. They don't change. They use the same method to trick man, to sin. So Peter is not telling, telling the churches that look, these angels are bound because they sin, they transgress. As soon as I will tell you, I will show you also too, that Peter also thought, because of these angels that were bound, that Christ went to meet them and warn them. I'm not making this up. Watch this, I will show you, I will prove all things. Okay, that is, this, this priest that, that Peter is talking about is those angels that had sex with women before the flood. Because angels have man's nature. But only when they are commanded, they manifest it. If they, if they are not commanded, it becomes a sin to them. Because sin is when you go against God's commandments. That's just what sin is. But angels have man's nature. They have body, they have flesh, they have blood. Okay, people don't know this. It's a mystery, yes, I know. Angels have flesh, they have blood, they, they can be, they can eat. Angels can, can do everything you do. But 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 when they are commanded to do so, then they do so. That that that, that is not, not, not a sin to them. But when they go against what they are not told to do, then it becomes a sin. That's what sin is, a transgression of the law. Because angels do have law. That's why Isaiah 45 verse 12 says, All their hosts have I commanded. Because angels are subjected to commandments. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? All, all God's creation are subjected to commandments. Those in light and those in darkness are subjected to commandments. Read. Second Peter 2 verse 4 again. Second Peter 2 verse 4. Aha. Uh -huh. For if God spared not the angels that For if God spared not the angels that sinned. Aha. Uh -huh. But cast them down to hell. But cast them down to hell. Cast them down under the ground. Read. Now mind you, take, take it to this note. Cast them down to the ground. So Peter knew of this information that there were angels that sinned. Angels in plural that sinned. And God cast them down to hell. Because God used other angels in the recording this event. But continue reading. But cast them down to hell uh -huh. and deliver them unto the chains of darkness. And, and kept these angels in chains of darkness. Uh -huh. To be reserved unto judgment. To be reserved unto judgment. Do you see that? Read. Control reading. Verse 5. Uh -huh. And spare not the old world, uh -huh. but save Noah the eighth person. <coughs> because this when these angels came, and spare not the old world, but save Noah, save his except, but except Noah the eighth person. Now watch this. First Peter 3 verse 18. These angels that sin that were bound under the earth, I will show you that it was during Noah's time, during the flood of Noah. Watch this. Because they are sin is them mingling with women and pregnant them. I'm not making anything up here. 
Give me the book of First Peter, chapter three, verse eighteen. Read. For Christ also has once suffered for sin. So for Christ also has once suffered for sin. Ah, uh -huh. the just for or the unjust. Gone. That he might bring us to God. Mm -hmm. Be put to death. So Christ was put to death. I take it to pay attention. Christ was put to death. Don't be so. Yes. I read. Be put to death in the flesh. So Christ was put to death in the flesh. Uh huh. But quickly by the spirit. But quickly by the spirit. Uh huh. By which also. By which also. He went. So Christ went three days when he died. He went also and did what? And preached unto. So the Christ spirit. went and preached unto the what? Unto the spirit. Unto the spirit. Uh huh. In prison. Who are these spirits that were in prison? That Christ went to preach mm -hmm. unto the spirits that were in prison. Continue reading. Who are the spirits? We sometimes. We sometimes, uh huh. Were disobedient. They were disobedient when? When was the long suffering? When was the long suffering of God? What did when? What did in the days of Noah? What did in the days of Noah? So this spirit that, that this spirit that Christ went to went to meet and preach, okay? There were those that were punished during the time of Noah's flood. This is what the angel, this is Saint Peter speaking here. I'm not making this up. Continue reading. Yes, well, well, yes. Well, 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 when Christ died, Christ went under the earth. That, those three, three days that Christ was absent, he went under the earth. To preach, preach is not, he preached not trying to make them to repent. So, preach is, is, is con con convincing the angels and warning them and, and telling them of their actions and their deeds. Yes, those, those, those spirits. That's why he said those spirits. It's not the righteous. Christ went to preach. Christ went to preach to the spirits that were disobedient. Doing that, that God, God anger, went there during one's flood. That's what he says here. I'm, I'm making this up. That's why the same Peter says that the angels were cast down to hell. Not be so. They were cast down to hell. Because hell is under the crown. And Christ went to preach on the spirit that were in prison. Lift your precept up. Christ went to preach on the spirit in prison. The angels that God did not spare, he cast them down to hell. Then Christ went to preach on the spirit in prison. Under the earth. Spirit in prison. Spirit, not flesh. It's not understood. Alright. Read. Verse 20. Uh -huh. Which sometimes... Were disobedient. When was the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah? Mm -hmm. Why the ark was a pre preparing during few? We we sometimes were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, why the ark was a preparing? We are in few that his own souls were saved by water. Is that understood? Jude, Jude 1 verse 6. I'm not making it so even Jude know of this account of the angels. Jude 1 verse 6. Let's go there. Because the Bible tells you that where two or where there are two or three witnesses, and also that every word is established. Is that, is that what the Bible says in Matthew 8, 18, 16 and in John 19, verse 15? Jude 1 verse 6. Uh-huh. And the angels and the angels, uh -huh, which kept not their first estate. And the angels in plural, which kept not their first estate. Because these angels were the stars of heaven, like Enos was talking about. No, I, will, I, will, I will show you the book of Jubilees. Okay, Jubilees will still address what, what Jubilees, Jubilees, the book of Jubilees will still confirm what Judah and, and Peter says. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but let what? Their own habitation. But left their own habitation. You see that? Because they left, because they descended, okay, in Mount Hammon, in Addis. Like the book of Enoch chapter 6 and chapter 7 says that these angels came down to Mount Hammon in Lebanon, in South Africa. That's where these angels came. It's not that And then they became promiscuous and mingled with women and had sex. Okay, and impregnated these women and bought giants. I hope you are following. So it says, and the angels which kept not their false estate, but left their own habitation. Mm -hmm. He has reserved. So God reserved them in where? In everlasting chain. Uh -huh. Under darkness. Uh -huh. Unto the judgment of the great day. Exactly. Is that understood? Jubilees 5 verse 1 to 15. It came to pass when the children of men began to multiply mm -hmm. on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and daughters were born unto them, mm -hmm. that the angels of God, mm -hmm. that, that what? That the angels of God, that, that what all the men? That the angels of God, that the angels of God. So I'm not making so Jubilees Jubilee is not giving you the account of Genesis 6 verse 1. And to confirm what Peter and Jude is saying, read this. That the angels of God uh -huh. saw them uh -huh. on a certain year. That the angels of the same angels in plural of God saw them in certain year. Okay, of this jubilee, that they were beautiful to look upon, and they took them took themselves wives of all whom they choose. Uh -huh. And they bear unto them sons, and they were giants. And they bear unto them sons. The women bear unto these angels sons, and they were giants in plural. Because they gentle of various tribes, of various looks, various appearance. So, so some of them, some of them were the Emims that the Bible speaks about. Some of them were the Zamzumim that the Bible speaks about in, in, in Genesis 14, verse 1 to 6. Okay, or in or in or in um or in 22, verse 11 to 20. The Emims and the Zamzumim. Some of them were the two lion-like creature in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel 3, 20. Then he says, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man, the son of a valiant man mm -hmm. of, of Gabzil. 
who have done many arts, who have so many arts in wars that was going about read. He slew two lion like men. He slew two lion like men of Moab. Because these two lion like men of Moab is what drew me to that two verse 11 to 20 says. Because these lion like men were the Emims or the Zamzumims or the Yemim that the book of Joshua 36 verse 28 to 38 speaks about. The Emims or the Yemims are children of holy angels because they look dif they look different. They were of various tribes. They look very different. Some of them were past man, past lion. That's why you see if you look at the the, the, the Egyptian war of Giza, you will see image or sculpture that has man having horse body or lion's figure, having man's figure at the same time. They exist. It's not, it's not, it's not film trick, it's here in scripture. Okay? Then there were the Emims or the Yemim. Here in 2 Samuel 23, verse 20, he called them two lion like men of Moab. Two lion like men of Moab. Because these two lion like men were the Zamzumim or the Emim that were living in Moab. They were of various tribe. That drew me to verse 11 and 26 feet about. I'm not making this up. Is that understood? All right, do believe five. Let's go back there. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Angels' nature on this about lesson. Read. When the children of men mm -hmm. began to multiply mm -hmm. on the face of the earth, mm -hmm. and daughters were born unto them, mm -hmm. that the angels of God saw them on a certain year of this jubilee, that they were beautiful to look upon, mm -hmm. and they took themselves wife of all whom they choose. And they bear unto them sons, and they were giants. Yes, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. And lawlessness increased mm -hmm. on the earth, mm -hmm. and all flesh corrupt his way. Yes, all flesh corrupt their way, because the angels were teaching men to corrupt themselves. Read. I like men, and cattle, and beasts. Everything corrupt themselves, both men, both beasts. That's why in Genesis 6, God said, I will flush out everything that I've created, both man and beast. Because God's oath and covenant was with both man and beast. I will show us that I'm not making this up. No one's event will tell you that that God made a covenant with all, every, every creation. Every, every single creation of the Most High God are bound by oath. Once you go against that oath, you'll be judged. Is that is as simple as that? Every single thing is commanded. Read. Jubilees 5 verse 2. Uh -huh. And lawlessness. So even the animals began to obey these angels. Okay, and transgress against their own commandments, against their own laws. Read. And loneliness increase on the earth, mm -hmm. and all flesh corrupt his ways. That's why you see, in those ages, you have the age of the Tyrannosaurus, the Tyrannosaurus, and all these large and gigantic creatures, because this were, this were the art of hybrid. Okay, hybrid, hybrid is a, is a crossbreeding of, of different species. That is to say, angels are men, or their children are men, or their children with animals. Read. I like men and cattle, and beasts, and bears, and everything, that walked on the earth, all of them corrupt their ways and their orders, and they began to devour each other, and lawlessness increased on the earth, and every imagination of their thoughts of all men was thus evil continuously. Verse 3. And God looked upon the earth, yes. and behold, uh -huh. it was corrupt, yes. and all flesh. And God looked upon the earth, so this is the same event you see in Genesis 6. Read. And God looked upon the earth, mm -hmm. and behold, it was corrupt. Mm -hmm. And all flesh had corrupted his order, mm -hmm. and all that were upon the earth, have and all flesh had corrupted its order. Every single thing that God created, gave, God gave them order. Read. And all that were upon the earth, mm -hmm. have wrought all manners mm -hmm. of evil before yes. his eyes. Yes. Verse four. And he said that he would destroy men and all flesh upon the face of the earth, which he has created. Mm -hmm. Verse five. But Noah found grace before the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Most High God. So this is what Judah and the Apostle were addressing. To which God anger waited on the days of the flood, where he eight, where he eight persons were saved by water. Read. Verse 6. And that, that's what Peter was saying in 1 Peter 3, verse 19 to 20. Read. Jimmy 5, verse 6. Mm. And angels, and against the angels, and against the angels whom he has sent upon the earth, uh -huh. he was easily wrought, and he gave commandment to root them out of all their dominions. Mm -hmm. And he bade us to bind them. And he bade us to bind them, uh -huh. In the depths of the earth. In, and he bade us to bind them in the depths of the earth. This is what, this is what uh, Jude 1 verse 6 is addressing. That the angels were, were, were in prison or under the earth in darkness. With chains, with chains. Not be so. Read. And he bade, uh, and he bade us to bind them in the, deep, in the depths of the earth. This, uh, this account of us, of the angels that were, that were asked to bind, is recorded in the book of Enoch. In the book of Enoch chapter 10. Read. And behold, they were bound in the midst of them, and are kept separately. Verse 7. And against their sons. And against their sons went forth a, com a command from before his face, uh -huh. that they should be smitten with the sword and be removed mm -hmm. from under heaven. Verse 8. And he said, My spirit shall not always abide on men, for they also are flesh, and their days shall be 120 years. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. 
And he said he saw unto the Amis that he should, he should slay their brother, their neighbor. The soldier is the word. Okay, the soldier is the word or the casting or the or the or the commandments of the most high god that god commanded the, the angels to do to cause confusion and to create that war which was the which was the war of the titans or clash of the titans or battle of the titans read verse 9 and he sent his sword unto the midst of each should slain their each their brother each, each uh, neighbors and they began to slay or what your hollywood call avatar or what your hollywood call avatar or star wars when you're watching that movie that hollywood movie called star wars star wars was the battle of nephilim the aircraft that flew in the air so the craft of the so-called UFO that flew in the air, they were battling that in, in the heaven. The war continued in the heaven where they, where they were exchanging nuclear weapons or what they call nuclear weapons today. As a matter of fact, the kind of technology that was used to fight this war, okay, are more advanced than what you see now. Is that understood? Read. Give me 5 verse 9. And he sent his sword unto the Yemis that he should slay the neighbor. And they began to slay each other till then. Till then all fell by the sword. Exactly, because the Nephilim war was also on the earth and in the heaven. Read. And were destroyed from the earth. Verse 10. And their fathers were witness of their destruction. Exactly. And after this, they were bound, they were bound mm -hmm. in the depths of the earth what forever. Verse, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Until the day of the great condemnation. Condemnation. Mm -hmm. When judgment is executed mm -hmm. on all those who have corrupt their ways mm -hmm. and their works before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. And he destroyed all from their places, mm -hmm. and there was not left one of them who he judged not according to all their wickedness. Mm -hmm. Verse twelve. And he made all, and he made for all his works. I have told you whenever there's a desolation, there's always a remnant. Capture us before. Verse twelve. And he made for all his works a new and virtuous nature, so that they should not sin in their whole nature forever, but should be all righteous, each in his kind always. Verse 13, and the judgment of all is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets. Exactly. So the Bible says, and, and his judgment of all is ordained. So angels are judged, animals too are judged, as you can see. That after the angels have seen the, the, the fall of their children, they also too will be bound underneath the earth. Is that understood? So he said, and, and, and the judgment of all is ordained and written on the heavenly tablet in righteousness. Uh huh. Even the judgment of all. So, the, so, so some might say that why are the angels being punished? That why, are the, why if angels have man's nature, why did God give it to them? Because all must be tried. And once all is tried, it, must be, it comes with judgment. Is that understood? All right, read. Even the judgment of mm -hmm. all who depart from the path which is ordained. Exactly. Even, even the judgment of all, all who depart from the path which is ordained, all who depart from the path or the oath which they are ordained to work for themselves, whether it is angel, whether it is the angelic being, whether it is man or beast or the fish or the bird. Okay, so all who depart from the path that they are commanded to walk in, from the threshold they have to walk in and they go against it. Okay, they'll be punished. So if the most give them a path, the most must try them. So therefore, the, the most must create something to try them. And that's why angels have man's nature. To try them in, in that part that they were given to operate. Each angel is so part. Serve man for, for cold. Serve man for heat. Serve man for the weather. Serve man to create the, the, the division of days. Serve man for this. But when I ask you to serve, them, I must try you too. How do I try? Them? I must also give you a power to have man's nature. Okay, to see if you if you will obey your order. But but I will use another I will I will use another power to try you. Is that simple? Man, man has the power to eat another food. But man is, man is not, not commanded to eat that food. But God will, God will set that food there for, 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 in front of the man's face. Knowing that man has the power to eat the food. Because God will try, try man. There's someone that creates something that will not try, te test what he creates. You, you create a cow to test it. Gentile knows this. That's why he says everything in the heaven, they, re they replicate it. They learn from the things in the heaven and copycat them on the earth. They copycat everything of nature, both in the heaven and on the earth, and replicate it through, through te technology. And the judgment of all is ordained and written on the heavenly tablet in righteousness. Even the judgment of all who depart from the path which ordained for them to walk in. If they, if they walk not therein, judgment is written down for every creature and for every kind. 14. Verse 14. And there is nothing in heaven or, exactly. or earth mm -hmm. or in light yes. or in darkness. So there is nothing in heaven or, in, or, in, or on earth or in light or in darkness or in show. Or in the depths, or in the place of dark, or in the place of darkness, which is not judged. 
Do you see that? And all their judgments are ordained and written and engraved. In regard to all, in regard to all, he will judge the great according to his greatness. Do you see that? So angels understand the judgment of their of their transgression. That's why Shemias has said that I know of this, this thing that I do is of great sin. Because angels know according to their order that if they sin, there's no mercy for them. But man has mercy. They know that. That's what, is, that's what this angel will not pardon. They will not spare. That's why Peter said that if, for if God spared not the angels that sin, but can, God did not spare them. Because angels know their judgment. That's why Shemias has said it himself. But yet he still, he still went to commit this sin. Read. Jimmy's 5 verse 15. Uh -huh. In regard to all, mm -hmm. he will judge the great according to his greatness, mm -hmm. and the small according to his smallness, mm -hmm. and each according to his ways. And each according to his ways. Genesis 18 verse 1. Let's go. Genesis 18 verse 1. Genesis 18 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord appeared unto him mm -hmm. in the place of Mamre. Or Mamre. Mm -hmm. And he sat in the tent door mm -hmm. in the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. And he lifted up his eyes mm -hmm. and looked, mm -hmm. and lo, Three men stood by him, mm -hmm. and when he saw them, mm -hmm. he ran to meet them mm -hmm. from the tent door, mm -hmm. and bowed himself towards the ground, mm -hmm. verse 3, mm -hmm. and said, mm -hmm. My Lord, mm -hmm. if now I have found favor in the sight. Now, now Abraham thought that these men were angels. Abraham thought that these men were these people that came to him were ordinary men. Okay, because Abraham used to entertain strangers. It's not me so. It's in Abraham to entertain strangers. You can see it in, in, the, in the book of Genesis chapter 22 with the sons of Ephron, the Hittites. Abraham was buying down to them. Okay, Abraham was calling them Lord. Or they also were addressing Abraham too as Lord. Okay, men, men were being addressed as Lord. That is common. So Abraham did not, did not, did not know that these men were angels. He thought that they were regular men. Read. Genesis 18 verse 3. I, I, and you can find the same culture in, in the journal of Israel in the book of Judges 19. Read. Genesis 18 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And said, My Lord, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, mm -hmm. pass not away, mm -hmm. I pray thee, from thy servant. But those that translate it make it look as if Abraham knew that they were angels. Abraham did not know. Read. Verse 4. Verse 4. Let a little water, I pray you, be fresh, mm -hmm. and wash your feet, mm -hmm. and rest yourself under the, under the tree. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. And I will fetch a muscle of bread mm -hmm. and comfort ye your heart. Mm -hmm. After that, ye shall pass on. So Abraham said, I comfort you your heart, eat of this bread that will serve you of man's food. With the materials used to making bread and all the ingredients and all the uh, uh, desserts or the delicacies that Abraham said before these angels. This this men that Abraham did not know that they were angels, which we know now that they are angels, because we'll find we find it as soonest. So these angels will eventually eat. So if they are angels and they are purely spirit in their form, how come do they sit on the chair that Abraham will them to sit? You understand what I'm saying? How was Abraham able to see them with his play eye? And how was he able to eat the bread that man do eat? If angels are purely spirit, I don't have man's nature. Wonders of our creation, angels' nature, on this about lesson. Read, verse 6. Verse 6. And Abraham, hastening unto the tents, Unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cake upon the heart. And Abraham ran unto the heart, heart and fetch a calf, tender and good, and give it unto a young man. And he hastened to dress it. Verse 8. And he took butter mm -hmm. and milk, uh -huh. and the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. Uh -huh. And he stood by them uh -huh. under the tree, uh -huh. and they eat it. And this man did eat it. So this, so this man ate animal. This man ate butter. This man ate milk. They ate cake. No be so. Mm. Oh yeah, let's, let's read it. We'll, we'll, we'll find out who they are as soon as. Read it. Verse 9. And they said unto him, mm -hmm. Where is Sarah, thy wife? So this man said, Where is Sarah, your wife? Uh -huh. And he said, Behold, uh -huh. in the tent. Yes. Verse 10. And he said, uh, I will certainly return unto thee mm -hmm. according to the time of life. Now this man began to speak the word of the Most High God as they are commanded to do. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee. Because now they are speaking the Most High's word to Abraham. He says, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Uh -huh. And Sarah had it in the tent door mm. which was behind him. Verse 15. Then Sarah denied, no. saying, uh -huh. I laughed not, uh -huh. for she was afraid. Uh -huh. And he said, mm -hmm. Nay, but thou did laugh. Uh -huh. Verse 16. And the man rose up from death, and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them. 
to bring them on the way. So I says, and the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, because this man will not go to Sodom to do something there. And Abraham went with them to bring them on their way. So now Abraham, Abraham has finished entertaining these men that we are three. So now this man, Abraham will not escort this man on their way. As Abraham told them that after you are finished staying under my roof, after what after I entertain you, you may go your way. So now Abraham is about to send this man off. These three men off. But now something happened with these three men. Because two of these three men came to Sodom eventually. That's way too. And the men turned their face and went towards Sodom. So and the men turned their faces from them. These three men turned their faces from them. And went to so they went. That, that's that's the key precept. They, they went. So they, they left Abraham alone. And went towards but is it all of them that went towards Sodom? Uh-huh. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. But Abraham stood yet because one of them remained with Abraham. Chapter 19, verse 1. Let's go. The next verse. Uh, let's read. And there came two angels. And there came two angels. So these were the two men. <laughs> so these two men were angels. Uh -huh. There came two angels to Sodom at evening. And there came two, two angels to Sodom at evening because one still remained with Abraham that the monster was using to converse with Abraham. That if 50, if 50 righteous men were there, if 40 righteous men were there, if 30 were there, if 10 were there, if 5 was there, but 2 went towards Sodom among those 3. So these men are now proving that they are angels. And there came 2 angels to Sodom, and they went towards Sodom, and, and there came 2 angels to Sodom at evening. Even is evening. And Lord sat in the, in the gate of Sodom, so Lord did the same thing Abraham did. I went to meet them and bowed down, he said, before they read, he'll tell you that. He sent to Abraham did, because Lord did not know that these men were angels, but those that translated, look at it, Lord knew that they were angels, but they don't know. But Lord did not know. But, but after what they knew, Abraham after what knew that these men were angels, but, but initially did not know. Lord did not, do, not, Lord did not know initially, but after what they knew. Read. And Lord see them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself, with his face and Lord seeing them rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground because Lord learned from Abraham the way of the way of the most high God read he did his best he's not, he's not perfect because he said to transgress in the way after, after the destruction where he slept with his daughters verse read. 2 and he said behold now my loss turn him I pray you unto your servant's house and tarry all night and he said uh -huh. behold and he said behold now my loss the same thing Abraham said Abraham called us men Lord because men, men are not to be called Lord Abraham too is called Lord not be so David too is being called Lord. Read. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, mm -hmm. turn him, I pray you, unto your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your way. You see how Lord was addressing angels as if he's addressing men. Because Lord thought they were men. Because these angels has men's nature. Angels' nature on this about lesson. So Lord, Lord is standing there that looks, still stay in my roof. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray thee, into your servant's house, and tarry or stay all night, and wash your feet. Because Lord saw them physically. Wash your feet, uh -huh, and you shall arise up early, and go on your ways, as Abraham told those three men. The same men that, that appeared to Abraham appeared to Lord, but two of them, read. And they said, Nay, but we we abide in but which but we but we will abide in the streets all night, verse 3, read. And he pressed upon them. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him. Uh -huh. And he entered into their house. And entered into his house. And he made them a feast. And what? And they break on living bread. And they break on living bread. So, so the bread that the angels can eat is on living bread. And they break on living bread. And they did eat. So that's the key word there. So any angels can navigate in between spirit and physical. That's why, that's why if, if you read down what the angels told Lord that depart, I will not destroy the city unless you have gone. No be so. Because the angels will not trans translate themselves from physical to, to spirit and go into the heavens and command the storm. And, and do what and, and speak, speak, speak to the other angels that thus says the most high. Or you're, or you're not manifest your power. So now the angels of his will not do what? Obey the, the command of these angels that came. Because angels hear themselves because there's hierarchy. So these angels will not do what translate the spirits, go into the heavens, and now speak, speak to their fellow angels. Now, now we are done our own part. Do your own part. Don't be so. Because this time, this time you, 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 you can see the book of Daniel, where, where, where one angel speaks to another angel. Go, go, speak to the man, even the book of Zechariah, you know, so did you see it here? Go, tell this young man, for thus says the most high God, Israel shall be, shall be, shall be, shall be, shall, shall, shall be in, 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 the, in the wilderness for multitude of flock. Zechariah 2 verse 1 to 5, that's precept there. I don't, don't I, I can't remember everything there. 
Because angels speak, speak to angels. Genesis 2, verse 24. Give us a book of Genesis 2, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man. So Jacob thought that this person was a man. He doesn't know that he's an angel. But he thought that he was a man. Because this angel has man's nature. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled, wrestled a man. What is man? It's not, it's not, it's not flesh and blood. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's man not made of the dust of the earth. So angels truly have man's nature. But when they are commanded, like this man or angel came to meet Jacob, once they are commanded, they manifest themselves with that man's nature and do everything as man do. But people don't know this, that the thing is here before their eyes, that angels have properties of man. It's very simple. The, the, the lesson is very simple. But people just don't know how to combine the precept. Because everything has to do to understand. Do you understand what you are reading? Read. And Jacob was left alone. Uh -huh. And there wrestled a man. And there wrestled with a man. There wrestled a man. Uh -huh. With him. Until with him until the breaking of the day. Yes. And when he saw that, and when he saw that, he prevailed not against him, because Jacob thought that this man is a man, not an angel. Yes, yeah, Jacob was battling with an angel that has flesh and blood. Read. When he saw that he prevailed not against him, yes, he thought. So when this man or this angel saw that he prevailed not against Jacob with the with the flesh and blood, ah, uh -huh. he touched the. Oh, uh, okay. So this angel now told the halo of his style of Jacob's style. So the angel now uses uses angelic power, okay, to defeat Jacob. But when this angel was using manly power, flesh and blood power, bone to bone, flesh to flesh, to fight Jacob, now you, 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 you cannot tell me that wrestling, because this, this was wrestling in scripture, to show you that the wrestling has been of old, and there's no way you cannot tell me that in wrestling there's no wound, you must wound, because they will throw themselves to the ground, not be so, they will carry themselves to the ground, I want to see wrestling, where two men are fighting, fight, two men are fighting wrestling, exactly, because that is the most wound. So Jacob thought that this man was man and not angel. But this man was an angel. This angel has man's nature. Fighting Jacob with man to man power, bone to bone, blood to blood. Because angel has man's nature. Only when they are commanded to do so. And this angel was commanded, so this angel did not transgress. This angel was in code, it was in order. But Shemiazah, Azazel, these angels that has man's nature, they transgressed. And God did not command them to manifest in the flesh, to go and have sex with women. But they went and do so. They did what they translate themselves, okay, to flesh. And now went to go and have sex. But this angel translated himself and do what God asked him to do, which is to do what? Fight with Jacob, to show the nation that Israel is a strong nation. They are strong and mighty in battle. Read. Verse 25. And when he saw that, that in flesh, no, 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 no nation, nation can stand against them. That, that's, that's the understanding with the, with, the, with the angel fighting with Jacob. It's a sign to, to, show, to show that nations that Israel is mighty and strong. That Israel can battle with the angel and defeat them. How much more we now have in the original nature of man? Read. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, yes. he touched the arrow of his time. So now this angel now he uses angelic force to, to now war against Jacob. So, so he warned him. But flesh to flesh, blood to blood, with this angel with man's nature, can't defeat Jacob. Bone to bone, flesh to flesh, this angel man to man cannot beat Jacob. Read. And the arrow of Jacob's ties was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Verse 26. And he said, Let me go. Let me go. Now watch this, huh? For the day breaketh. So the angel told Jacob, Let me go. For the day breaketh. Now why did he say, Let me go for the day breaketh? Because at this hour of the day, angels go and praise the Most High. That's what the book of Job, 38 verse 7 says. And when the morning stars sang together, morning star, because this angel is a morning star that has man's nature, that has flesh and blood. Shemyaza, okay, Azazel, we are morning stars. But this was the morning stars that rebel. This angel is a morning star. But this morning star angel did not rebel. That's why he said, Let me go. The day breaketh. Because at this time, he was was around five between five to six because the day break by six a.m. Because this angel wants to go and praise the most high, like Job 38 verse 7 says. And when the morning stars sang together, because this angel that fought with Jacob, that has man's nature, now want to translate himself to the heaven to appear in a spirit nature. But has man's nature when it comes to this dimension or when it comes to this realm. Because angels has man's nature. Only when they are commanded that they do not sin. So now the angel now want to translate. Tell Jacob, free me, free me. Let me go for day break it. Why is he saying that? Because we know by mystery that angels at this hour, okay, praise the most high God and go and praise him. That's what Job 38 verse 7 says. Because the morning stars praise the most high God. Because angels praise the most high God. David said in Psalms 148 verse 1 to 6 that let all the hosts of heaven praise the most high God. Those in the heaven, the angel of sun, the sun, the moon, the stars of light. That's what David said. Praise the most high God. 
So this angel said, let me go for the day of prayer because he wants to go and praise the most high God and give his report. Okay, give, give his report, then praise the most high God. I'm not making this up. If you read the book of Vision of Paul, chapter 7, he addresses it very, very clear. Read. Genesis 32, verse 26. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Except thou bless me. Exodus 16, verse uh, 4. In the book of Exodus 16, verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, or look, I will rain bread from heaven. Now, why would the Most High God rain bread from heaven? Because there are things in the heaven that must be eating this bread. But, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out soon as read. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, uh, I will rain bread from heaven yes. for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Yes. That I may, I may prove them mm -hmm. whether they will walk in my law or no. <coughs> whether they will walk in my law or no. Psalm 78 to 23, let's go. So let's see this bread that came from heaven. Who is to eat this bread? Let's figure it out. Why is God eating this bread from heaven? That means there will be something in heaven that eats this bread. Read. Though he had commanded the clouds from above. Uh -huh. And opened the doors of Though he had commanded the clouds from above. And opened the doors of heaven. And had rained down manna upon them to eat. And giving them of the corn of heaven. Now, if you, now if you look very carefully, you notice how the most I refer to bread as corn. Sometimes when the Bible refers to bread or corn, it's not the literal bread or corn. It's actually referring to food. Sometimes it's actually the corn and the bread himself. Is that understood? But in this case, it, the bread here is the bread. But the corn here is not the corn. The corn here is actually the bread himself. The real bread. Verse 24. And I drink down manna upon them to eat, and I give them of the corn of heaven. 25. Man did eat angels' food. Man did eat angels' food. So the so the manna which God sent down for the children of Israel to eat, so that bread or that food that the children of Israel ate, that food was angels' food. So angels eat even in the heaven. Because why why is that so? Because the feast days that Israel celebrated on the earth was already in the heaven. Before man, before man's flesh manifests in the earth, those feast days were was kept by man in the spirit in the heaven, together with the angels and the most high God there. So the heaven feast there. Christ feast there, eat and they drink in the heaven there. Read. I'll say five again. Man did eat angels' food. Man did he eat angels' food, uh-huh. He sent them meat to the food. God sent them meat to the food. The meat here is the food. Jubilee 15, verse 26 to 27. KJB, Jubilee 15, verse 26. Mm -hmm. The Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. And everyone that is born, mm -hmm. the flesh of whose foreskin is not circumcised, mm -hmm. on the eighth, on the eighth day, mm -hmm. Belongs not to the children of the covenant. Now watch this. Now God says, and every one of them, now that is to man, and every one of them, this is law of circumcision, and every one of them, because there's no way you cannot be, there's no way a man can be circumcised, okay, if he doesn't have flesh, not be so. So you must have flesh, and you must have penis to be circumcised, and circumcision, the law of circumcision is to be recognized as an oath to represent holiness. So understand the principle of circumcision, that when circumcision comes an oath, circumcision is an oath or a covenant between man, between man and the most high God, not be so. Now, circumcision is done in the flesh of a man that has penis. At the man, at the man, at the private, private organ of a man, not women. Man, the mystery behind circumcision represents holiness. That is the talking of the oath. That is the thing that you sacrifice to say, yes, the most I will serve you. The pain that you are willing to go to serve the most high God. The length at which you have to go. To, because it is not easy to cut a part of your flesh. It's painful. So that is the length at which you have to go to serve the most high God. It's an oath of a covenant. That cutting of the flesh represents the pain at which it takes for you to serve the most high God. You must always remember it. So therefore, with that cutting of the flesh comes the oath. Because the things that are in that oath is the cutting of the flesh. The oath or the token or the commandment or the, or the vow between man and the most high God. And this thing must be done in the flesh, not spirit. So if angels are purely spirit, let's not see what, what the book of Jubilees is saying here. Concerning circumcision, is it only, is it only for, for man? Because as we have seen furthermore, that men wrestle with angels, not be so. And these angels that men wrestle with had flesh and blood. Angels appear to Abraham and Lord. They have flesh and blood, not be so. Read. And everyone that is born, the flesh of whose foreskin is not circumcised on the eighth day, belongs not to the children of the covenant, which the Lord made with Abraham, but to the children of destruction, nor is there. Moreover, any sign on him that he is the, Lord, the Lord's, but a bracket is destined to be destroyed and slain from the earth and to be rooted out of the earth. 
holiness. For he has broken the covenant of the Lord our God. For he has broken the covenant. So that's a covenant there with circumcision. Read. Yes, of the presence. For all the angels of the presence, every single angel that has man's nature are circumcised. Every single angels that has man's nature must be circumcised. Of all class of angels in heaven and on earth. Read. 15, 27. For all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification have been so created from the day of their creation. But people only just know that angels are spirits. Like the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13 to 17 says, that, that by you were all things created, that were in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So people have always known angels to be invisible. But people don't know that even in your, even in your regular King James Version, that angels' nature is manifest there. That angels too also flesh. But only when they are commanded, they manifest it. Now in that flesh, they must be, they must be circumcised. Because circumcision commands holiness. For the Most High God, because it's an altar, a covenant of the length at which a man must go to serve the Most High God. That's circumcision. So all these angels are circumcised in their flesh. So read it again. For all the angels of the presence and all the angels. For all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification are being so created from the day of their creation. That's why they don't want people to have the Book of Jubilees. All these books that belong to the Hebrews to so the Ifrit. Even if you don't have the book of the Jubilees, even your regular King James Version, angels' nature is manifest that they, they, they have man's nature. Also, it says that, and all the angels of sanctification have been so created from the day of their creation, and before and before the angels of the presence are... And the angels of sanctification... Yes. He has sanctified Israel. He has sanctified Israel. Uh -huh. That they should be with him and with his holy angels. That they should be with him and his holy angels. Last precept, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8 to 9. Let's go. In the book of Proverbs 9, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Reprove not a scorner. Yes. Let's see AD. Yes. Rebook a wise man. But, re but rebook a wise man, uh -huh. And he will love thee. Because a wise man will hear when a wise man speaks and will do what increase in learning. Read. 9. Give instruction to a wise man. Give instruction unto a wise man that has wisdom. That know what you are saying. We will obey what you are saying. Except it's not wise. Read. And it will be yet wiser. And that's a wise man will be yet. So it's already wise. But it's here another wise man speaks. So therefore, in storage will increase. Because these are data for internet 12 verse 4. Where they shall run to and fro. Running to and fro means seeking out records. Study, reading, studying, and meditating. Then therefore, knowledge will increase. Give, give instruction to, to a wise man. And he will yet be wiser. Uh, let's go. Teach a just man. Teach a just man. Who's a wise man already? Yes. And it will increase in learning. And it will increase in learning. He's already wise already. He's already a just man. But he will get that wise man and increase in learning. But if the people will just be jealous or envious or at least stubborn. Read. Then the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Because this is how you fear the most high God. Obedience is key. Uh -huh. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Any question? Any question? Say the angels uh, presence year on year on it's a if it were man that have that uh, glory over the enable they carry we did possible for man to go through through that. Yes, that year, year. I showed that to Christ. When Christ resurrected, beginning from 24, all the way down to verse 25. Christ went through portals, he doesn't need to knock the door. Because Christ was showing us the power of the, of the resurrection, as, as I was showing us with marriage, that though man, man is resurrected, man will still have, man glory will be restored back to the original, which is the previous, of them being flesh and blood. Okay, but still having the, the power of angels. As a matter of fact, their power will supersede angels. Can man, the way man breathes in this realm here, the oxygen, is it to, about the same to about the... What do you mean by as man breathes here with oxygen? What is oxygen? Oxygen is an element in the, ox, oxygen is an element in the heaven. The thing that, that, that the elements you see in the heaven are, are run by angels. This is how you get it. When Christ was on the earth, Christ translated. That's what angels does. Okay, that thing that Christ did with his disciples in that transfiguration is, is exactly what man can do when they go into the heaven. They translate and go into that realm and fit into that realm. It's because of sin that make us be talking about flesh and blood and all these things. Originally, there's no such thing called flesh and blood. It's just the nature of, of man. It's just you are you is you. But see relegators, you are still saying, see, it's just like the angels. The angels, when angels come into this dimension, they need to fit in. 
So for, for them to fit into this dimension, they need to be in your body. They can be able to communicate with those in this dimension. When we go into the heavenly realm, we need to be at a certain body. You are still saying they can fit into that realm. Not be so. I hope you are getting what I'm saying. It does not mean that man cannot manifest fleshly in, in, in the heaven. No, man can manifest flesh in the heaven. It's just that it's the way people have understand, get the understanding over the years because our power was reduced. So now people are not saying flesh, people are not saying spirit. Man is not, not, not searching as flesh. Man is, is that, like that. Man is, made up, man is made up of so called flesh and so called spirit. The compartment of man as one is both flesh and spirit, as they call it. Flesh, and, you see, it is the way that people name it. That, that's what creates the separation. As if spirit is not greater than flesh. No, spirit is not greater than flesh. Man's flesh don't die before. When God reduced man's power, God take out of the flesh and reduce his power. In the spirit, God reduced the power. God reduced the power both in the spirit and both in the flesh. So when God reduced the power in the spirit, now man cannot live so much longer. Now man do not begin to shrink. But originally, there's no such thing as flesh and no such thing as spirit. Man is just man. Man is man about who is made. How is he made? The, the thing they call flesh and the thing they call spirit. That is man as a whole. So if, man, if that man as a whole wants to go into the heavens, he chooses to he, he fits into a realm. If, if, if you want to go and appear before a king, you have to dress up. You, you have to change your dress, not be so. Change your dress to appear before a feast. To appear at a certain event. That's, that's, that's a simple understanding there. That, that does not mean that your, your, your body cannot go to go and appear in that, in that place. But you will be embarrassed. They, 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 those guys may, may, not, may not let you in because that's not that's not the code of dressing you, you need to use to appear and this, this is the best way to explain it because that's not the code of dressing you need to use you need to appear before that king or in that place because that place that, that, that community has its own dress code so if you don't learn the manner of that dress code of that community there's no way you can come there even though you can you can come there with your, with your body so man's body can go into the heaven but see, see, will not let us go there. But once our power is restored back to us, our body can go there. But this thing they call body and flesh is how, is how we describe it. But originally in the beginning, that body and flesh is not, is not, is not described that way. Man, man, man can go to a realm and dress up. Dress up in that place they want to go and visit. So if he's coming to visit this place, he will dress up. That's that translating to this place he wants to come and visit or stay. But still, in that flesh, it can appear in the heaven. Because that flesh don't die. So therefore, that flesh can do what contain, can travel through gates, in, in, for some the speed of light, to appear before the most light with that flesh, that don't die. And that flesh should not be destroyed. Because it is immortal. Anything, anything immortal does not die. There's, there's, no, element, there's no element that can, they can destroy it. Because your spirit don't die, don't be so. And that before don't die. But he, 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 he don't die, he lived many years. So therefore, there's, there's nothing that can destroy his flesh. Back then, when his original power was with him. No, the element which is make up of. The element that make him up. There's nothing that can destroy him. Yes, like, 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 like the weapon of war. Exactly, like the war of like gun, like knife, like sword. Like sicknesses, those things cannot affect you. They, they cannot do you anything. That's why I see in, in, in the resurrection, it tells you that in the, in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 1 to 11, that they will climb walls like thieves, like robbers. And if anyone pierces through them, it will not hurt them. They will fall on top of the sword, they will not die. Exactly. It's just, it's just that sin makes us to begin to use all this grammar, like man is flesh and his blood, because our flesh power, our flesh percentage power was depressed from 100% to 10%. Then in our spirit, we depressed. But God did not remove immortality from our spirit. What, what God removed from our spirit is knowledge. So now for us to revive our spirit, we have, to, we have to be seeking out and studying to revive that spirit. But for, but, but for us to restore the flesh, but Christ will do that on that aspect of, 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 of doing his coming. So now, the, 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 the two power now combined together, man will now return back to his original state. God removed each man's power from each, each of his body. Body, body, this one, they call, this one they call flesh, and body, spirit. For the spirit, for man to restore the spirit back, man needs to study. For man to restore the flesh back to immortality, that, 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 that one has to wait until Christ coming. But once he complements the other to assist, you have to receive his own gift back, which is what we are doing now. So that's so now the, the, spirit, the, spirit, the spirit is now assisting the flesh to gain his immortality, which we receive as a gift when Christ comes, during the resurrection.
Is that understood? Does that answer the question? Any other question? If there be no question, wonders of our house creation, angels' nature comes to an end. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. All right. The King James Version, the book of Revelation 22, verse 10. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come out quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter into the gates, into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth, and maketh a lie. And the spirit and the prayer say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is at test come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The grace of your child, the anointed, be with you all. And we all say, so be it. Come, your child. All right. Ka, Tabarat, Wahalo, Kadash, Haya, Shamka, Ahaya, Walo, I will lamb jam, Walo, I will lamb jam, Bahashem, Yashaya, Aisha, Shamajam, Waharataza, Alashadia, Barakata, Tawana, Tawana, so be it. Daughters of Zion,